do jazz hands. Join me in jazz hands, you <laughs> bastards. All right. Put on your big girl panties. <laughs> Hank Strange is in the building with friends live from the Big Daddy Gun Studios. That's right. We're doing it. Today's subject is going to be video game guns versus real guns. Oh, yeah. And when we say real guns, yeah. I, mean, I mean real guns like this. Do you guys notice? Oh, yeah. On here? Ooh, this is not your shit. This is not just your, this is not your regular Chris Vector. Oh, you got you have the fun switch. Yeah, this has the fun switch on it. So we're gonna talk about that. But our special guest tonight for a limited time is this gentleman right here, the Tyven Show. Is that what everyone calls? How it? you doing, gentlemen? Thank you for hey, having me. Oh, by the way, you said big boy, big boy panties. Having a gun like that, that's not a man thong. Those are like fruit looms. Oh. <laughs> oh, gee, thanks. There's a big gun. <laughs> Listen, it's you yes, know what sir. the my uh, my uh, the the most fun thing to do when I ever I go to Shot Show Media Day is to go to the Chris booth where they have these guns full auto and oh, suppressed, <laughs> uh, and I just burn up as much as they of their ammo until they go. Can you get the hell out? <laughs> Really, please. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna. So you're not about, doing it right. You have to bring a case of ammo with you, shoot theirs, and then shoot yours. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. You crash their gun. Uh, <laughs> that I know this is like a break of gun guy etiquette, but no, I shoot their ammo. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> I know that's kind of messed up. See, but. in video games, we're unlimited in ammo. All you got to do is just reload and keep going. Shake yeah. the gun and it reloads. Shake the yeah. gun. And it reloads. Exactly, exactly. So the Tyvin yeah. Show. I want you guys to. Uh, I want you guys to. If you're not already subscribed to the Tyvin Show, I want you to subscribe. He's going to be our resident video game expert today. Basically, we're going to compare video game guns to real guns, right? And we're going to have that conversation. Yes. I don't. I don't know a lot about video game guns, um, so I'm going to kind of like moderate and learn something. And you're you're okay. our, you're a resident expert because that's what you do on your channel, right? That's what you mostly talk about. Mainly is Call of Duty, GTA Five. I've ventured off in some real gun videos and vlogs and stuff, but yeah, mm -hmm. Call of Duty, Killzone stuff. I've been playing them since two thousand nine. Uh, for you guys asking, I am a truck driver by trade, and I'm actually on the Pennsylvania Turnpike, sitting here having this awesome conversation with you guys. <laughs> That's so badass, man. So what kind of what kind of rig are you in? Let's find that out since you're talking about being in the truck. What kind of rig? Um, I, I don't know if I want me to say the name of the company, but uh, I'm in a big green international corn harvester. Okay. <laughs> Pro, Pro Star. Pro Star. Okay. So you're you I think you you told me off here that you're doing one of those double um double trailers, right? Yes. Uh, yes, um, the company I work for, uh, we mainly haul pups. So just remember, the faster you go, the straighter they stay. Just pretend you're in New Jersey, beep your horn, and you can make it through any traffic jam. Yeah, so I, you know what? I've always, won I've always wondered what it's like when you're sitting inside the cabin of one of those things, and then you have me on the highway, like, just doing the speed limit. And those trucks come up behind me, and they just sit behind Son of me. Bitch, get out of the way. <laughs> I could just imagine that guy cursing me out. Hey. <laughs> No, 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 no. Patience is a virtue because eventually you'll get on your cell phone and slow down five mile an hour. I just go like that and get right back over the phone of you and I'm gone. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, usually those things come up behind you like Jaws, man. You guys sneak up and then I can feel, I can feel my, because, you know, I got little wimpy vehicles <laughs> compared to what you're driving. Yeah. And I can feel it getting pushed around. Yeah. I'm like, okay, yeah. Let me no, just you don't know what wimpy is so you're driving a Fiat 500. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, wait a minute. I thought you drove a Dodge Challenger Charger. Yeah, Challenger. What he's talking no, about. No, I drive Tank I does. drive a Dodge Challenger. <laughs> Believe it or not, Walter drives a Fiat 500. All right, let's yes. I, I start at Fiat 500 and work my way all the way up to full-size military truck. So, yeah. You know, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Walter goes hey, the there Gambit. You go. I mean, he's usually got a big suburban and and it's weird because he's a milk, but he, he's a he's a car guy like me. So Walter drives all kinds of cars. Yeah, I don't turn I don't turn nothing down. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> just just like when all it comes right, to well, the ladies. Well, let me ask you this: What is the one vehicle you sold that you seriously regret getting rid of? Then, if I could go back in time, I had a 1968 Mercury Cougar XR7 GT. 
What? Oh, and it wow. was, and it was at the time I paid one hundred and forty dollars for it. Um, but it was, it, it was. Oh, wait, a hundred and forty? Yeah, it, it had been hit in the front, so I had to fix oh, the front end. Okay. But it, an XR7 GT is a rare package. You get both the, you get the eight-track tape player and all the fancy stuff plus the three nine <laughs> plus the three ninety engine. So that thing, even though it was ragged out, kind of, it was still chirp gears when it shifted. So, you know. It was a that would have been a good car to yeah. have now. Yeah, that would have been nice. I mean, those oh. look those those have like that really cool sleek uh, muscle yeah, car yeah. look. I had another one that's not so fancy but still rare. I had a uh, Gremlin GT. Uh huh. Oh and the, yeah. No, 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 right. listen, listen, Baby listen, face listen. is making a face. <laughs> no, don't make a face. That had a 304, 304 V8 with a four speed on the floor. It, it's another kind of rare rare car. car. Yeah. yeah, those are also rare. Cool. Those are in. Um, those are some in some eighties movies, aren't they? And I think we probably paid fifty or sixty bucks for it. Oh my gosh! And I and I and I parted, I parted it out. Oh goodness gracious! <laughs> and the rest yeah. sounds like Walter. <laughs> yeah, you know that could have been in Stranger Things, man. If you you probably don't even know what Stranger Things is, Walter. No, but no, no, no. that was that was um that was early eighties, so it wasn't worth anything then. Yeah, I remember the most remember of those, those are being scrapped by then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are those are pretty cool right now. I mean, you you could be in so many '80s remake movies, and there's this show on um, Netflix called Stranger Things, which is the most awesome show Netflix has ever <laughs> produced. <laughs> we also, Anybody, we anyone also, who doesn't believe that is crazy. We but, also, my dad stumbled into an early uh, Toyota pickup truck from or the Datsun, I think it was an early one. Uh, and, that's um, Nissan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and well, it was Datsun back then. <laughs> and, yeah, um, right. Mm -hmm. And um, that thing ended up getting scrapped too. So, you know. Yeah, that's pretty cool. What about you, Babyface? You had any cars that you regret selling? I've had one, two, three. I'm on my fourth. I'm on my fourth Mustang. No one, one. just one. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a, no, he's saying he's on his fourth Mustang. He's a Mustang guy. I'm on my, I'm on my fourth Mustang convertible. I had a '92, a '97, a 2001, and now a 2008. That's all you get. That's all you hey, get. Give me one second. Oh, let, let, let me pray for you, for all you Ford fans out there. I'm so sorry. You know, you keep buying the Ford, but someday you graduate up to a Chevy. We, 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 we honor you and may the Chevy gods have mercy on your soul. Uh, okay. I don't, How about I don't know if I, think, I agree with that. I think I'm, I'm kidding. Gonna, I'm totally kidding. I think I you will convince Marley to buy me a car like, like uh, Hank has, one of the, the big like 6.3 liter V8. Yeah, 6.4, 6.4. 6.4 uh, liter V8. Yeah. You know what's the, the hottest thing coming? Mid-engine huh? mid, mid Corvette. That's on its way. Oh, that's oh gonna, God. That, that's going to be the hottest thing in the I don't have the money for that. <laughs> yeah. Um, Do, don't quote me, but I think it was in 1989 or 91. Chevy came out with their Chevy pickup, 454 all-wheel drive, that actually beat the Corvette in a quarter mile. They stopped production of that, and then they were actually testing the mid-engine Corvette back in, like, 90, 90, 91 to beat the truck, but it never won in production. Yeah, I've huh? seen a prototype. Yeah. Oh, wow. Another, another Chevy car that didn't make it, they were thinking about it one time making a V6 Chevette. But they were worried that the V6 Chevette would be faster than a Corvette. Right. Okay. It they they had the V6 3.8 liter turbo. It was the same motor that was in the Grand National 88 GNX. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so, um, those guys are still building those cars and racing them now. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tyvin, so what's a, what's a vehicle that you sold that you regret since you asked the question? You posed the question. Uh, my 2002 Dodge, uh, I'm sorry, my 2002 H2 Hummer. Ooh, H2, nice. H2 that's a nice Hummer, one. yeah. Yeah. Oh, love to have an really? H1. That, well, that I, mean, I missed the Hummer, dude. I should have never sold it. Uh, my number two was an 84 Pontiac Trans Am. Yeah. I always wanted a Hummer. Now, tops. Yeah. Now, Walter's going to poo poo this because he has the real Humvees. <laughs> oh, so. the, the H2 just turned into, in my opinion, kind of a pig. You know, just big and, you know, I don't know. I like the H1. Give me an H1. GM, GM messed up when they got rid of the Hummer. They should have put the Cummins engine in it because the truck's only got 11 miles a gallon. Yeah. 
Yeah. It didn't matter if I had my trailer, my race truck behind me, or had 5,000, 10,000 pounds. I got the same it thing. It did not matter. That thing got 11 miles to the gallon, period. Yeah, but H2, I think H2. It was a gas hog. Yeah, H2s look like Tonka bit, like Tonka toys. They didn't have a lot of room inside. No, I, they I, were... almost, I almost bought an H2, and I wound up buying a passenger van because I really wanted to have a lot of space, so I bought the passenger van instead. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for those H2s to be like five thousand bucks used, and then I get one. <laughs> they're getting there slowly. They're getting there. <laughs> I'm gonna get one. And they're da uh, they're down the between engine. nine thousand and sixteen thousand right now, depending if you get the one with the airbag suspension or the solid spring. You can pick one up. It's got about two hundred thousand miles on them now for about nine grand. Yeah, and I think you can. I think you can change. You can convert those. You could put in a um, diesel engine, right? think so you can do it yeah guys yeah. are putting the comments in them right now yeah exactly so now since nobody asked me but I'm gonna tell you guys Go like I had a vehicle that I sold that I really well I, oh, I know what it is what I what know. is it your Isuzu yes my Isuzu via cross I missed that that was my baby if so for anyone what, what who, was it an Isuzu via cross this was like oh a, yeah this was a, a what you call a halo car vehicle for Isuzu, basically four by four, a little cute. Is before they had all these um, these very aerodynamic crossovers you have now. Basically, look like a moon vehicle or something. <laughs> and I think Isuzu built maybe like six thousand of them that came to America. I don't know if it was even that many. I meant but, to, I meant to get a hold of you the other day. I saw one for sale. Oh, you I, did. I didn't know if I should or not. Yeah. Um, so according to Lola, I made some agreement where I'm not, where I'm not allowed to buy. I'm not allowed to buy any more project cars. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> apparently I buy project cars, put a lot of money in them, <laughs> and then I go on to other project cars and. And you never finish them. Yeah. So she's, uh, yeah. she's not very happy with me about that. Oh, so sorry. Uh oh. Oh, looks like you went over. sideways there. He rolled over. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Sorry. So, sorry about that. So no, that's cool. So you know what? So we were gonna the the whole subject matter today is gonna be um, it's gonna be video game guns. So Babyface, you you're also a video game guy. Oh, big time. Yeah. So do we know like what are the top video game guns out there that are real guns? Because I know there's a bunch of video game guns that aren't real, right? Most so most of you are like military shooters, like Call of Duty stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Most of them are gonna have you know, a normal modern guns. Um, they just, the problem, the problem with video game guns is you have to balance them somehow. So you like, you'll have a shotgun won't shoot past like 20 feet. Like most video games, if you pick up a shotgun, you have like 20 feet ahead of you and that's all it's gonna hit. When, you know, in real life you go bird hunting and yards, it'll go yards. Okay. Um, but yeah, it, it all comes down to balance. They have to, they have to balance them somehow so they they pick and choose what they want in certain firearms to to make it more balanced for the game. Right. So are video game guns getting more realistic? Depends on the game. In my opinion, it depends on the game. Battlefield. If you go play Battlefield, um, oh. I'd say those are getting a lot better. Call of Duty is more about run and gun, fast paced shooting. So it's not it's not about like having the most realistic shooting. Um, but yeah, there's there's some games that are getting better. And anytime I pick up a game that has uh, that has just really good gunplay in it. I'm always like, man, this is this just feels so good. It sounds right. You put a suppressor on this, and it actually sounds like what a suppressor should sound like. Okay. Um, uh, we've been uh, playing lately. We've been playing um, player player unknown battleground, and the gunplay in there is is very good. The suppressors you throw a suppressor on a on a gun, and it's they they did a good job recreating it because it sounds like a suppressor on a handgun or on a rifle. Okay. You know, I'm back now, guys. Sorry whisper. about that. Yeah, okay, that's cool. You got your it sounds like you had some things going on with your audio. Yeah, somebody tried to call him on my mobile, sorry. Oh, well, that's cool. So we were talking about and, and I'm I'm gonna invite folks to hit us up in, in in the comments and all that and let us know like what are your favorite video game guns, you know, um and how are those guns on video games versus real life? So maybe we should get like some kind of list that we can run down and then we'll talk uh, about them. It depends on what, what game you're playing, um, like Call of Duty, Battlefield, or like uh, one of the older games, Killzone. A lot of the guns that you see in the video games are made up. They're not real. 
And then certain guns, like you'll see Call of Duty, they'll actually have to go to the company to license the image yeah. in order to have that in the game. Um, with video games, they can actually structure that gun to be really nice, really good, really realistic, or crappy. Um, it just happens to be the flavor of the day. And then the, the, the MLG guys, the, the professional guys that play video games, they'll go in and they'll break the guns down to like a scientific science. And then they can find what gun has preference over another one. And then they'll use that in their games and in their streams and whatever. And then say like Call of Duty says, oh, okay, well, this gun needs to be nerfed. Well, they'll go in and turn the gun down a little bit, make it so it's not as competitive. Uh, the new Call of Duty game that's coming out, and I think it's November 4th, which is supposed to be World War II, from what I have talked with a couple of the other Call of Duty YouTubers uh, that have already played the game, they said it's very realistic and like 99% on point with actual guns of the time. So the, the game manufacturers, they do go out of their way to try to make the games as realistic as possible and feel as realistic as possible. But like your, your um, new shiny toy you just picked up there in front of the screen there at the beginning of the live stream, um, there is a couple of them that uh, have the vector. Um, the Black Ops 3 that was out, that's what I run in that game is the vector. It's an awesome gun. It's a good running gun. It's good for close combat, uh, sneaky round. Uh, but if you're trying to shoot somebody across the map, even on a digital game, you can't even hit the broad side of a barn with it. See, that's what's funny is, you know, you take a vector in real life. You can you could shoot out to three or 400 yards. You're going to be, I mean, it's a 45. It's going to drop like crazy. But yeah. if you can make a hit at 300 yards, it, it could potentially kill a person. I mean, it's it's got the power yeah. behind it still. It's just, you know, they they have to they have to nerf things in certain ways so they're they're balanced. It all comes down to balance. Yes. Right now, what is that word you guys keep using? Nerf? Is that like nerf? Yeah. Buff and nerf. Yeah, <laughs> yeah go ahead, but go ahead, baby. It's, yeah. it's nerf so, and nothing. So buffing. Uh, it, this the lingo comes from uh, like MMOs, like WoW. Buffing is when you bring something up, and nerfing is when you take it back down. So, it, like, okay. if, if it's too weak, it, it gets a buff, and they make it better. Um, if it's too strong, they nerf it and make it weaker. Wow. So, it's like running a 100-grain bullet versus 178. One's more effective than the other. Uh, Same principle. So, so, nerfing is basically what progressives are trying to do to all of us, man. Yeah, they're trying to nerf our gun rights. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah, trying yeah. to nerf us down altogether, man. Bring That's down right. our freaking... Hormone levels, sperm levels, you name it. Well, speak They're nerfing us right. down. Okay, I learned something new. That's great. Okay. But they, they do oh. have it down to a science, and the programmers and everything, they go down and they, they make stats for the guns. Yeah. Uh, rapid fire will give you an advantage in some certain game modes. A suppressor will give you an advantage in certain game modes. Uh, different sights, different scopes, different attachments, hand, stock, quick draw. Um, it changes the balances of the weapon and yeah, it gives you more, a, gives you more accuracy because like everybody plays differently. I've seen guys go get the chain guns like the saw or the M60 version of a digital gun in a video game. And they'll mm -hmm. sit in one spot and not move the whole game. And then <laughs> I'll have a little like vector style gun and I'm running and jumping around like a chicken with his head cut off and he'll outscore me. Well, his, they make the gun, if you pick a heavier gun, your character is more sluggish. So you can't move as quick or as fast as, like, if you would have that vector. It, it's a complete total science behind it. I mean, these guys, they've got stats. Um, if you watch a guy, I, I want to go ahead and drop his name, Drifter. Um, he does big breakdowns of gun videos for Call of Duty. Oh, okay. So it's like a strategy behind what guns you get and uh, what, what yeah. guns you have. Okay. And is Call of Duty like the big game? Yeah, um, Call, of Goli, I, Call of Duty, I think, is number one. Battlefield is a close number two, just in the U.S. Um, but I think Counter-Strike is more worldwide and has a, big, yeah. has a bigger following. Okay, Counter-Strike. Okay, so Walter, was there a question you wanted to ask? 
Yeah, um, I'm thinking, you know, everybody's talking about guns, but do they have, like, things like that carry, with, like, weapon, sidearms, weapons, knives? Or does it not yeah. ever get... Does it ever get not that close up in the video games? Oh, yeah. Game. I mean, yeah, like, that too. There you go. Nice machete. Woodsman, oh, pal. Yeah. 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 Let's, let's the, take a good look. No, give us a good look at that, Walter. What is that? It's called the Woodsman's Pal. Commercially, okay. it's called the Woodsman's Pal. It's been around since before World War II. This happens to be a military issue one. Oh, it's wow. Got, okay. The, the carrier and everything. Um, it's kind of a nasty weapon if you had to use it against somebody else because you got a hook that's, yeah, that's for gutting the pig when you're out in the field and you're starving and you haven't gotten your supply drop in for three days <laughs> or you got to cut a seat belt off your buddy in the airplane or something like that you know so um i was just curious about about the the handheld weapons yeah so baby uh, face so baby face uh, so do we do you get to do the handheld stuff like that in the games it depends, or? It depends on the game um call of duty is a very fast-paced game so it's mostly centered around shooting um you're gonna you're gonna die every 10 to 15 seconds unless you're you're pretty talented i mean you're dying and respawning quickly when you're in the smaller maps battlefield like uh, the new one that came out battlefield one um that one is a lot slower paced and there are like you can do like bayonet charges and they have swords you can do like horseback ride with a sword and like lock people's heads off and stuff <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's it depends it really depends on the game yeah now like kill zone that you would have like a big rambo knife and the melee kills that was in that game dude they were brutal i mean yeah. you come up behind a guy and it would pull your head back and you could ram the knife down the guy's throat, clear down into his chest cavity. I mean, it, it was a pretty brutal game. So what's weird about this for me, to hear you guys talking about this, I'm, I've got no problem with all the violence and stuff like that that's in the games. But it's weird that being a gun YouTuber, you know, we've actually got guns and we practice safety and all that responsibility and self-defense, etc. And we're like the bad guys. Yes. Well, yeah. see, that's the other thing. You'll have gun games like that that has a lot of blood and gore and brutality in it. But if, like, uh, Tim from the Military Arms Channel, he posted that video about him shooting them um, prairie dogs. They'll complain about a prairie dog, which is a rodent. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it's for the better good of the land. Yeah, the and it that. helps the farmer. But yet, they'll, they won't say anything about a digital description of a guy getting his head cut off or shot in the face or a leg getting blown off. You know, the, the, I'm not going to go political, but it's amazing how certain groups of individuals get up in arms over the dumbest thing well, that actually helps humanity versus something that's digital in a video game that's twice as brutal. Go and ahead, still Walter. have visual appearance. Right. Go ahead, Walter. Or they, or they don't have a problem watching ISIS videos cutting people's heads off with a dull yeah. knife. Burning somebody alive. So, or right, right. Or burning them in a fire and everything else. So it's like, you know. Yeah, like so, let's not go there. It's not too intelligent. Yeah. Well, listen, yeah, we can go yeah. political. I don't mind if we go political. Is the no, we do. Yeah, that's what we're here for. <laughs> Fuck that. Well, right. you know? We're here to well, go I political. Did, I didn't know what the borderline was, and I didn't want to cross yeah, that, line in the, that um, line in the sand. No, well, there is no line, man. We crossed into okay. Lesbonics yeah. the other night. There is no line. <laughs> There's no line. We got no walls, no lines, no borders. <laughs> you don't need visas or anything. Just go Les there. Lesbonics. <laughs> yes, Lesbonics. There you go. Oh, well, you bring, I, are you I, bringing I, up Lesbionics again? Lesbionics. That's right. Yeah. Walter's yeah. bringing it back up. Yeah. I like I like that picture you put posted up with the Yes, the thumbnail was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm pretty I, I don't know if you guys know, I, well, but I've well, gotten a lot of flack over that thumbnail. Oh, I don't <laughs> that surprise me at all. It's an eye catcher. You put a good one up. That's <laughs> Yeah, well there's a well, apparently there's some gun guys that can't handle that thumbnail for whatever reason. That's, uh, you know, you there's yeah. a, there's a lot of thumb guy thumb uh, gun guys that can't handle their own face. So Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, so you know, not I'm not changing it, so yeah. <laughs> it's staying. It's there to stay. Oh, it definitely was uh, almost borderline clickbait. Then I clicked <laughs> I, on it, was I, watching I, it, and it's like, you know what? This is true. This ain't clickbait. Yeah. Well, someone was. Uh, I think there's probably a couple of people uh, giving me a hard time about clickbait, but no, when you go, it's not clickbait. When you go in there, it's that's not. what we're talking about. Yeah. 
just like uh, someone was giving me a hard time because we put up a snippet. And for people who don't know, we're talking about we've been putting up some snippets from from this show because obviously we go, you know, hour, hour and a half, two, three hours or whatever. So I've been putting up some snippets on YouTube so that people who are time challenged <laughs> can get a chance <laughs> to uh, look at some of what we talk about here. And we talk about some crazy shit. So the uh, the one that I put up with um, with Mac for Military Arms Channel where we were joking around about him getting a sponsorship for Monster Energy. Yeah, People were like, yeah. oh, that's clickbait. <laughs> that's what we're talking about in the video. All right. Yeah. So whatevs. And hey, if I got a clickbait <clears throat> you to get you in, you know, I'm not against clickbait, masturbate. Oh. <laughs> I'm just against probate. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, dear. Yeah. No, but that's, but that's on a real for this week, right there. Yeah. 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 On a real <laughs> serious note, I, I would have to give credit to Tim um that i found his channel here uh eight months ago nine months ago i couldn't agree more with a guy in in regards to weapons overall than that gentleman right there i, I totally agree that every law is an illegal law the second amendment says shall not infringe and that guy has gotten my respect uh it's up there with my respect to my dad uh, so oh, yeah. yeah, he he is the godfather of your gun YouTube. Yeah. So he's a, he's a good guy. But, he's putting a lot of work in out there, you know. Um, yeah, and and he puts a lot of it on the line and all that kind of stuff. And I think yeah, he's right. All these laws are freaking. Listen, we should all we should all be able to get ourselves a full auto Chris factor. Okay. If, if I if I can wait a year to get one of these, I mean, really, what's the difference? Yeah. Well, why should we even be waiting for these things? It's so stupid. Get, get, get what, baby face? I can't see what oh, you I got, got, dude. A suppressor on my uh, on my Beretta. Uh, yeah. I had to wait a year let's, to get my suppressor. Yeah. Hey, let, let's let's talk suppressors real quick. Okay. You okay? I think the whole suppressor game is a joke, and all of these suppressor companies are charging anywhere between five hundred and two grand, depending on what kind of suppressor you get. There's literally thousands of videos out there. I'm, I'm walking the borderline here, but hear me out. Yeah, you can form one. It, the, the, there, exactly. Okay, so if you want to make a suppressor, there is protocol and procedure that you can go down to your lo local gun shop, get your FFL guy, and say, hey, I want to make a suppressor. What do I need to do? And you fill out the paperwork, you serial number an item, you give it to him, you wait, you pay your $200, and then you wait for your thing to come back, and then you go make your own suppressor. Yeah. Suppressors don't have to be made out of titanium or any you know special type of material, unless you're running full auto or some big gun, but most guys are running bolt action or an AR style. They don't shoot more than about 20, 30 rounds rapidly in a in a gun range environment yeah go there ahead are, and throw up your suppressor oh, baby face you can go ahead and throw that up yeah there are so so there are some benefits to buying so I, i'm on the fence I, i'm i i understand both sides of the argument and um if you want to put the work in and i'm the type of person hank can attest to i'm the type of person that likes building anything and everything right um, yeah if you want to put the work in you totally can. You totally can put in, buy the parts, uh, and especially if you have. So for anybody that has a lathe and a mill, you can yep. make anything. Yep. Walter, why don't we make suppressors? I will come design one for you. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, you literally a lathe and a mill. You can, and if you even better if you have a CNC machine. Um, but lathe and a mill, you can make anything, and make them really well. Um, the thing is, not everybody has that. For me, like, so I have, uh, this is my, you can't, probably can't see it, but this is a, a Sanzico Omega rifle suppressor. Um, it has features that would be difficult to add, like replaceable end caps. Um, you'd have to machine your own end caps, make sure you thread the end correctly. You don't um, have to do any of that, sir. You don't have to, no. It's just, it's yeah. nice if I get a baffle strike or get an end cap strike, I can just buy a new end cap and replace it. It's not necessary. And I paid a premium for it, but yeah, no, you can totally get a mag light and put uh, put freeze plugs in it. Yeah, 
plugs down yeah. and drill it out, and you have a usable suppressor. You know what the thing is? I think we should have. No, a, I don't I'll, condone the, doing that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, put in your form one before you do that, obviously. But uh, yeah, yeah. if you well, put in your form one, you can do it. Yeah. Also, uh, you mentioned about the form the form one thing. You don't have to go to anybody to do that. You do that no. yourself. Yeah. You download oh, you it off the ATF. Oh yeah, website. yeah. You don't have to. You just fill out the form and send it in with the money. That's yeah, it. Yeah, you can download it off the ATF website, fill it all out, and send it in, and just and wait. You you can do your own fingerprint card, the whole nine yards, you know, yeah. as long as it's legible. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know what the thing is? I think that, um, I think there's nothing wrong with having all options. Right. Right. You right. know, what's going on, and I had that discussion with Tyler Key, what, what's going on here is that the idea that you buy this thing that's, if you're lucky, it's a couple hundred bucks, it can go all the way up to over a thousand, close to 2000 in some cases. And you buy this, then you pay a two hundred dollar tax stamp. And right now, the wait is somewhere between eleven and twelve months. Seriously, yeah, right. It, even it's even coming though coming down, but it's yeah, yeah. Even though no one's buying suppressors, no one's been buying suppressors well, for the last few months. The backlog is from all that the whole paperwork. Forty one yeah. yeah, I mean that yeah. there's, there's a combination of things why people aren't buying. People bought their self out before, before and that's before, what, just before forty one F. No right. shot had a suppressor handy. I mean. Never right. This is no. just this is this is like one of the assault weapon bans or one of the the rushes. Yeah. Everybody went crazy and ordered hundreds of things, and now they're not buying because they don't. They're bought out. Yeah, yeah. but the thing the thing I was going to say is that what's really crazy is that you do all that and then you wait all this time for what? Why are you waiting? I mean, if you're going to pay that thing, it should just be instantaneous or a few minutes, even it, a few days is fine. It but should, it should waiting, be like trying any gun. It should yeah. be a simple background check call, just like. Yeah, the what is I'm in agreement with you guys. There shouldn't be no weight on there. I mean, suppressors don't load ammo. You don't have a trigger on a suppressor. Nope. It doesn't yeah, do anything without anything. the weapon. Yep. Nope. Right. And it's, you know, if it's for some criminal reason, like you're going to kill someone and be really quiet about it. I mean, you know, knife is already suppressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think so that's really true. <laughs> and if you really want a suppressor to go kill somebody, you're not gonna. This isn't gonna stand in your way. You're gonna make it. You're gonna. Yeah, steal it. yeah. There's so many. There's so you're many things you can else. do. Right. Just look at a Steven Seagal movie. You can use a coke bottle. Exactly. <laughs> you, know. you know what's yeah. funny? I actually heard a story from a cop in Tampa. My my dad was a firefighter, so we knew all the police as well. But uh, there was a cop in Tampa who reported that somebody got shot through a potato. They went and bought uh -huh. a like giant potato and then put it to the barrel of the gun, shot through it, and it it suppressed it enough where they got away before the cops showed up the neighbors were just like oh what's that and then next morning the person was found dead i guess or something but well you know, more people are killed in bad, america by hammers than they are suppressors yes thank yeah, you yeah you want to do something bad you're going to and no yeah. law is going to stop you yeah knives and baseball bats and yeah, I think all of this is just a system of how crazy everything is. And then I know right now, I think what's happening is that because of all, like, the, you know, oh, these things are going to come off the NFA, then everyone stopped buying it, and then the suppressor market is falling apart and all the craziness that's happening, we're all now starting to pay more attention to what's going on with suppressors. Um, I notice that when I put up suppressor videos, if that video is uniquely about a suppressor, people don't didn't have as much interest in the past, and I don't think that's gotten any better. But maybe now we'll start to find out about this and then start demanding that, that uh, the people who are putting these laws into effect are a little bit more practical. I, I don't know what kind of, well, what chances the, we have of that. <laughs> the best thing that's gonna come out of this, even if it comes out next month or three years from now in regards to suppressors, take that subject off it's making more people aware of the gun and weapon industry and it's making more people aware of the second amendment and that they actually have rights and that they can choose to indulge in those rights or say you know what right now is not the time for me let them guys go do what they want to do i'm going to go over here and play with my barbie dolls but it is bringing more attention to the gun industry and the second amendment and it's catching more attention to the politicians. Okay. I, I was really hoping that Trump was going to do a little bit more once he got in office to, to help out. But you know, he does have his hands full. So I'm not making excuses for him. And yes, we are sitting here and yes, the, the second amendment guys are waiting their turn patiently, but Very patiently. You, you, <laughs> yes.
Uh, but that's uh, one good thing about the gun guys, and the true gun guys, and even the weekend novice guys, as you know what, the best comes to those who wait. And then once all this stuff is passed, it's it's going to be a good time. Um, and well, with Trump hopefully. being in office, guys aren't scared to go out and buy guns. They're actually indulging in, in weapons and going out and shooting because they don't have to worry about hoarding everything. God, the, yeah. the gun market's down a little bit, but attachments and ammo, dude, is through the roof. We haul ammo like you would not believe. And it's cheap now. It's getting cheaper by the second, the ammo. Thank God. I, yeah, I, just, I, just, time. <laughs> I just saw some 308 that was some surplus that's actually... The Malaysian? Yeah, down to 30 it, cents a round. It's 30 cents a shot for 308. Yeah. And that's, that's insane. And that's good ammo too. That's not crap yeah. or anything. Yeah. yeah, it's military. It's military surplus Malaysian 308. I, I, I shot a lot of that Malaysian 223. It, nothing wrong with it. So no, I if I had the money right now, I would buy a, a, a thing of that oh, ammo. I, I might have to buy some just to keep up the uh, the habit, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Well, it's it's like, it's Jesse like James movie. just got into the ammo stuff. They lo uh, he just started black black hills ammo or black oh, okay. ammo well, or that'll be that'll be like a thousand dollars a round because <laughs> each, each round will be individually that'll carved. Be, that'll be very very <laughs> 75 cents a round for 308 <laughs> very very atti very attitude strewn yeah do i'll you, just make you a suppressor he came out with no Say again he yeah, and so jesse james came out with a prototype suppressor and was touting these numbers on the internet saying he can and, and Walter, I think you probably know a little bit about decibel readings. He was saying he, his suppressor could get like 70, 80 decibels. And everybody's like, what? the action noise alone is 100. Yeah, decibels. because he had the guy from, yeah, he had the guy from Vance and Hines, who's a muffler manufacturer for Harley, step in and uh, design a, that uh, silencer so for his guns. Yeah, yeah. but, but his, his numbers weren't accurate. So he was like touting these numbers on the internet and everybody's like, it's not possible. You're cheating physics. That's just not possible. So he had yeah. to go back and rework it. We haven't seen anything of him in the last like year since. We'll since see. We'll see. I like Jesse James. I, I'm a he's fan. He's a good guy. And, yeah, I'm a fan. Although you know, I mean, he is. You know, he is a, a little bit across the line of douchery. <laughs> if you meet him in person, you know, he's not the nicest guy in the world. But you know, I don't really care about that. I've been a fan of him for a long time. You know, I used to yeah. watch he, Monster he, Garage and all that kind of stuff. So he's creative. Yeah, he's creative. But for Very. example, you know, I saw him at uh, I believe it was Shot Show, and you go into his booth, and he's got all these guns, and there's there's stickers there that say "Don't touch this motherfucker," <laughs> keep your hands <laughs> off, asshole. Well, we've talked yeah. about this. We've talked about this before, Hank. Some people like to be treated like that. Yeah. They, so. No, they think they're special if you get treated like that. You get told to fuck yeah. off, and you're like, "Oh man, he likes me." Yeah, that's, yeah, you're uh, paying for the attitude, not just right. the name. You're paying for the attitude. And, you know yeah. what? And I don't need that's the uh, NXX, I think it's NXS uh, song. Some of them want to be used by you. Someone, one of them want to use you. Just Some want of them to want to be abused by you. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. Yep. <laughs> I guess there's people that like that. Um, you know, that's that's um not in excess. That's um uh oh Annie. Um, oh no, Eurythmics. 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 Yeah, Annie. Oh, yeah, whatever, Eurythmics. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Any Linux, yeah, yeah, yeah. Linux, yeah, Eurythmic. So there you go. You know what I think? Um, you know, you were talking, Tyvin, about uh, if we're patient, that these things will come around, and I understand that. I think you know that's what Mac was talking about. We should practice some patience. I kind <laughs> of agree with that. But when you look at what's when you look at what's going on, like um, Scaramucci lasts about ten days. <laughs> yeah, what was up with that? Yeah. I, I have, that shit crazy. We I have are a, living in an upside down world right now. <laughs> I, have a, I have a conspiratorial theory. Okay. Oh, well, let me hear. Uh, well, he's a George Norrie for guy. Yeah, give me conspiracy <laughs> theories. Well, look at you. You come in for ten days. You get the you get the talking to. You're then you, you, they fire him and he's the bad boy and then he goes to work for like CNN or something. So now you got your guy. In CNN. So you think they just brought him in just to get rid of Priebus? Well, may, well, look at the other guy that they got rid of the uh, the the, um, the marine the naval officer. There was there was there was some talk about him going to work for CNN. You know. I don't know, man. I could tell you something. At some point, we we have to be realistic here and admit that there's just nothing but batshit crazy going on in the White House it, right yeah. now. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I, I understand support and all that kind of stuff. You know, I get it. But there's batshit crazy going on in the White House. We're not there either, so you don't know. 
you know. Well, I was wa- I was watching the news earlier today, and um, I apologize. I can't think of the girl's name, the press secretary. Everybody was asking her, you know, what's going Something on? Is there chaos? Uh, yeah. yeah. Is chaos going on? Blah, 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 blah. And I'm standing back here, like way back over here in the back of the room. You don't bring a general in that's going to, you know, <laughs> uh, law and order by the book, uh, is strict, you know. We play by the rules. Uh, he brought a general in. So he's commanding excellence. He's going to command the rule of law. Sorry. He's going to command all of this stuff. And he's going to crack some people in shape. And the law is going to be put down and no more BS on the side. Right. right, uh, right, you right, know, right. He, he brought a general in. That that's No, I understand he, he, that. He didn't bring anybody else in. Yeah, but at some point we have to stop fixing it i mean we're we're freaking in august already tomorrow's gonna be uh, august. but you know what everybody makes you it know. sound like everybody's like it's gotta happen now everybody's no i'm not saying it has now. to happen now but if we're still in batshit crazy mode i would rather have him be sorting things out than to keep these stupid fucking people there that are talking to the press every five minutes and leaking everything out you got to get rid of these people no, no doubt, no doubt. You have to have loyalty. That I, that's I mean, something I agree with Trump. You have to have loyalty. Obama had loyalty, all to to some extent, right? I mean, actually, if you think about it, the Obama administration was probably the most loyal. Oh well, they're you know? they're loyal they, like they're loyal yeah. like they commit suicide loyal to. Them. Yeah, yeah, know? but they weren't loyal to actually Obama. They were well, they were more loyal to Obama as the name, not as right. the presidency. They're right. Trump. When he asked for loyalty, because he's old school, he's what, 72, 73? He he's asking, yeah, he's asking for loyalty to the Constitution of the United States and him as the president, not as like an individual thing. Not the right. party, not the party. Yes. Now, which, right. that, now, I won't argue that. That's deserved. That's how you have to do this. People have to get in line and, and, and be loyal get and, get out. and follow the plan and all that kind of stuff. But what's happening is that there's a lot of people that are getting like sweet talked by the media and then they're giving up information like Walter is saying, you know, they're they're like offering them jobs and all kinds of stuff that these guys are like, oh, well, screw that. you know, we'll, ju- we'll just go over there. Well, if that's the case, you know, then just fucking fire everyone well he should have done that just burn the house down I, but you can't you know. fire everybody because you gotta have but why it's just it's still uh, you gotta out. have somebody sweep the floors and clean the toilet out you can't just fire everybody <laughs> oh screw that sometimes, i had to take the garbage out today you can't get rid of everybody listen let me tell you sometimes you gotta sometimes you gotta bomb the whole house man everything that's well, in there has gotta get we'll, bombed we'll bomb the house in korea save that for korea all right <laughs> Uh, uh, you mean the North, North Korea, right? North Korea, sure. yeah. That's yeah. Be- um, well, see, that I would even be impressed by. I mean, come on. let's. You they're, know. Actually, they're actually doing what I said needs to be done. They're planning for full-on hell, hell bomb every square inch of the place. <laughs> okay, well, I I'm- tell you what. I spent a year over in Korea, and I was on the DMZ. And my heart goes out to those guys that are up on that line right now because they've been in full combat mode for the last a oh, good two years. I mean, fight ready, locked and loaded, eating MREs, duty station, pulling guard. My my heart goes out to those guys because when I was over there, it was still kind of bad, but not like it is right now. So all the soldiers that's listening overseas, hey, brothers, we're with you. We stand behind you. Uh, you know, and keep let those, us know if you need anything. Keep those mini guns loaded and pointed in the right direction. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what we need to take into consideration is that we don't want to put those people at risk. And sometimes the, you know, the easiest way to uh, to deal with that situation is just bomb the living crap out of those people. Complete and total. That's yeah. what, with you the know. North Koreans, you gotta, yeah. you'll have to hit them so hard they won't be able to come back from it. Yeah, send them yeah, back my my grandpa know. told me a story when I was a kid. But I, I'm not going to get into the story, but he made a comment. He said, bomb them and let God sort them out. There you go. Pretty yeah. much it. Right. So, Tyvin, you, uh, it, it sounds like you're in the service. Is that something that you talk about? Where, where were you in? Uh, yeah, I was uh, U.S. Army. Um, okay. I'm now a disabled vet. Um, I was in during Desert Storm. Um, I was in the artillery, and I specialized between the 102 all the way up to the 8-inch. Um, and then when I got back from Korea, 
I went down to Fort Hood, Texas down there, and I was a command driver and an armor down there. Um, that's when we had the A, when I was in basic, we had the A1s, and when I got into my unit, we had the A2s. Oh, I loved them. But uh, um, I was an armor down at Fort Hood for about three years and got into the specialty weapons and stuff. And then when I got out, I walked away from the, the whole guns, the whole scene and focused on my career and my life and got reorientated back into society. Um, and then, like I said, you know, 19 years later, I'm getting back into guns and oh my God, man, uh, the, the technology, the guns that are out, the things that's out, the things people are doing, it's, I'm trying to catch up. There's no way I'll catch up. Yeah, there, there's no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, yeah you know, but I have a love and I have a passion and doing the YouTube and getting into the guns and stuff. Cause I got hurt real bad and I had back surgery and that's when I started doing YouTube and I was off for about a year and a half and I got into the video games and everything. And I was like, wow, you know, I really want to do this. And then when I started getting into the guns and I found a lot of the gun channels and stuff, I was like, man, check this out. This is awesome. I love this. But uh, I, I was reach, I reached out to another company. They're working with me. And if you guys saw my last video, I was up to a company called CNS Engraving in Columbus, Ohio. They do laser etching and stuff. Okay. Fascinating stuff that you can have done with your weapons. This is all new, Back getting back into it and everything. And it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing what technology is going to bring us in the future. If companies would stop making fucking AR-15s. No, wait, wait a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm not against the AR-15. It's it's my favorite rifle, but for Christ's sakes. Once again, that'll, yeah. that that'll be all that'll be all driven by demand. Until there's demand, there, there's there's some stuff that's getting ready to come out. Um, I I can't talk about it, but. Keep your eyeballs open in about the next four months. You're going to see a new revolution in AR platform like you've never even thought of before. Okay, cool. It's, what were you, what were you, go ahead. awesome. What were you going to say, Walter? No, I, well, I never thought I'd see binary triggers and stuff like that. I yeah, mean, that's that, a big that, deal. that stuff is that, you know, back in the 80s, just those simple little uh, Hellfire triggers, they were, uh -huh. on the, they were on the edge back then, you know, and they hardly worked at all. And then you got yeah. slide fire. When the slide fire came, and I was like, "Holy yeah, slide cow. fire is horrible." They're, okay. they're, they're approving this stuff, and then I see the binary trigger, and it's like, "Okay, game off." All you know, right. Did you see the gun collective today, where the guy's got an electric motor on the yeah. end of his finger that sticks in yeah. the trigger, <laughs> and you pull it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that <laughs> yeah, we were talking about that last week. The uh, the auto glove. Yeah. 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 yeah, we were talking about that last week. It's uh, yeah. You know, that's a little bit crazy. You know, yes, I would like to see what technology is going to do here. Go ahead, Walter. No, I, I'm thinking that auto glove. It's probably just a probably just an electric motor with a cam in it, and you just stick a finger on the trigger, and it just it just vibrates back and forth and does the same thing. So yeah, I'm sure it has multi purposes. Yeah. I'm sure you can use that for a I'm, lot of stuff. <laughs> and that, when you, when you, when you, yeah, your wife can use it later on when you're not around. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. More uses. Hey, listen, if something can be used in multiple ways, man, that's good. You hey, that's not that? 12 volt, baby. That's 120. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, yeah. they got you got high power vibrator. You know? Yeah, yeah. So listen, okay, so let's get back to video game guns here. First of all, let's yeah. ask like what's the most popular video game gun? Is it the AK forty seven? No. Used to be. Scar? Um, a lot of guys do run the scars. Uh I'll, I'll pick Black Ops 3. It's the Vector. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, Is the Vector really that brain, popular? Brain, brain fart. Um, there's the Vector. There's the um, H. A lot of the guns are made up, but they're like direct copies of a real gun, the HTC uh, or H HCK. Um, it's like the uh, AR platform, HK. Um, there's a couple of other ones like the new Call of Duty's coming out. You're going to have the M1 Grands, um, a lot of that style, the muzzle loaders, the bayonet style. Um, they're even going to bring back in some of the artillery pieces, like the original canyon cannons from the civil war, um, all the way up to the, oh you know, yeah. Uh, they're really trying to get back to the basic roots on the next Call of Duty, which is really going to be awesome. I've actually seen game footage of it. 
But uh, sidearms like the hand, uh, pistols and stuff, you really don't see everyday guns per se named by name in a gun in a game versus a real item. They copy it and they give it a fake name. Cheaper. So. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Well, they don't have to pay the they don't have to pay the royalties on it. Licensing fees. Yeah. Okay. So let me ask this question because yeah. I know we don't have you for that much longer, Tyvin. Um, yeah. How are the controllers? So do we have any realistic controllers that are like guns yet? Because this is one of my things with video games. Why I don't, I would get more into it if it gave me some kind of like training simulation and that the gun works somehow, you know, close to what a real gun would do. But I haven't. I've seen some things promise that, but not really deliver. What about you? Oh, uh, I think I lost you. Hold on. Oh, uh oh. Look, sounds Oops, like hold on. I can I can chime in yeah. on this real quick. Yeah, go ahead. So <clears throat> I, I don't know the company name offhand, but I know that there is a company that has developed um sort of a virtual reality thing where you you know those have you ever seen those little um uh trampolines that you get like a a toy store? Those I'm like back. smaller uh -huh. kids' trampolines. Okay. It's got that size and it's a moving walkway. So any direction you walk, it follows you. So you put on the virtual, like you put on like an Oculus or one of the other VR headsets, you can walk and it, you know, it, it walks underneath you. So it keeps up with you walking or running. Um, and they also have like a gun so you can like aim in, in VR. And it like whenever it gets perfected in the next five to 10 years, I already told Marley we're buying one because it's the coolest looking thing ever. Right. Well, now do everything. <laughs> PlayStation tried that. Uh, when the PlayStation 4 came out, there was a actual controller gun that you can get and purchase. Yeah. It was a huge flop because nobody wanted to stand up in their living room and move around and dodge and bob yeah. and swerve a fake target. Everybody wanted to sit on their butt, eat you know, greasy potato chips and Twinkies, you know, and relax, not get all hyped up. Uh, with the <laughs> VR stuff, I can see it coming out and being a thing in the VR world. But as far as live streaming and doing um, videos with the VR, it's really hard to do because the way that you perceive the perspective of the video from the YouTuber you're watching, you're either going to watch what he says or you're going to watch him flopping around in his living room, stepping on his coffee table. So it's more, it's more self-induced, but the, in the future there will be a way that you can walk into like your shed or in the middle of your garage or somewhere and literally put on a VR headset and not even have a gaming console and have a fake gun and run around and do all that. The, the army was doing testing like that back in uh, 93, 94 when I was in. Um, they had something similar to that that we were, uh, well, I was part of, um, that they had tried virtual reality with it. And guys were spraining ankles and their wrists because they were tripping and falling over themselves. <laughs> you know, because of the visual aspect, it takes away from your depth perception right. versus actually seeing things. Yeah, you have to be like like in the Star Trek holodeck where you, you don't have a you can't have a headset on your head while you're running around. That's not going to work. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that, I mean, I know obviously there wouldn't be as big as a, a market as the dudes who just want to sit there and eat Twinkies and all that kind of stuff. But I think, I think there would be a market of people that want to use it for training purposes because, you know, obviously as gun guys, I don't think we train enough and there's reasons for that, right? You know, a lot of times to go training, you need to take a weekend or whatever time it is and go well, off to this place, expenses, ammo. I mean, usually training, if you do, when I do training, it's a thousand rounds of whatever, at least of whatever you're training in with, and that you yeah. go through in, a, in somewhere between uh, a day, two days, maybe three days. Right. Well, the whole, the biggest thing about the gaming world and arms is I don't think it's going to be so much that you've put the gun in your hand and you're sitting in your living room. It's the guys that's flying the drones. These are the guys that were playing Call of Duty and whatever game they were playing on console. And now they're flying the drones halfway around the world and they're literally shooting just like a video game, but it's real life. That's, that was the main crossover from video games, first person shooters to actual military, uh, involvement with the guns and the joysticks and stuff like that. That's the true turnover on it. 
and, and dropping the thermite grenade in the ammo dump. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And look how simple that is. Yeah. I mean, that's just basically yeah. a, a commercial drone used to, as a bomber. Pretty, pretty ingenious, yeah. actually. Yeah. Now I know Walter. Yeah. When you were at Shot Show, you're across from where you had your booth. There was yeah. a company there. I can't. Uh, I forgot the name of the company. Um, but they yeah. were using these airsoft-like guns, and they had screens, and there's simulations that are going that, on, and you could shoot at the screen. That was fun. Yeah. So I, I think that, you know, um, I don't know how affordable that is. Okay, Lola's telling me that it was KWA. Yeah, KWA, yeah, yeah. That yeah. one, they, they, they were saying that wasn't a super expensive uh, setup there. Yeah. I remember so, correctly. Yeah, yeah, I hope we move, I hope we move uh, more in that direction. You yeah, know. If, you could, if you could have a room that had the screens completely surrounding you. 360. That, so, right, right, right. So, yeah, I just, I just linked something you guys can check out called the Virtuix Omni. Um, check out the, the, the chat that we have. Um, it basically, so it doesn't, the platform doesn't actually move. It looks like you have some little things on your shoes. Oh, that's um, cool. That help you slide. Yeah. But then it also has a gun and VR. It, it's the thing. So that you can I, walk I in position with that. That's actually pretty cool. It's yeah. super cool. I want something that, again, I don't think it's perfected yet. I, I don't think VR is perfected either. No. In the next five to 10 years, it's going to become really good. And that's what I want right yeah. here. And, I want to do something like that with my video. Games. Yeah, and you know what? Maybe, I mean, and the expense might still be a little, you know, relatively a little oh, bit high. It's going to be a couple thousand dollars or something. Yeah, like but maybe we'll get some places like how you can go to the gun store. You can get gun stores that can have would, setups and you can go in. I there. would go shoot. Yeah, run and gun. Yeah. Oh, it'd be so much yeah. fun. Yeah, you know, you could have like a club yeah. membership and go in there. I go in yeah. there every day. Be, you know? I mean, it would be a hell of a workout just, just running across your favorite video game, Wasteland. Yeah. So to any, to <laughs> yeah. any, uh, man, I wish I knew someone that owned a gun store that could maybe, <laughs> no. Just <kidding>. Right? <laughs> hey, we, hey, wait a minute. Hey, I had an idea. We could kick you out of that space you're in right there and set it up. Oh, no, we, we could. Set, we could set it up right now. Don't stop messing office. around my studio <laughs> space, Walter. <laughs> <laughs> Let me. I'm gonna mute you right now. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, no, I'm I'll, just kidding. I'll be good. I'll be good. No, it's a good space. Listen, Big Daddy Guns has a lot of space all over the place. So, <laughs> it, it, I'm sure it's coming. It, they're working. I'm sure the military and DARPA and stuff are working on stuff we're talking about as we speak. Oh so. yeah. Oh totally. Well, if you look back in the day with comic books and all of the ingenuity and wild imaginations that the things that you saw in the comic books that are actual reality today. It's the same thing that's happening in the video game world for the first-person shooters. Yeah. Because some of these techniques, um, technicians, and modern advances in technologies and stuff, these guys are creating these fantasy guns and things for these video games. Within the next 10 years, you're going to see 2% of that actually implemented into the gun world. Yeah. I mean, I, I see there's a comment from, uh, let me see this, from Eric Smith. He says, um, I want the stuff that's in the book called Ready Player One, which yeah. is coming out in a movie. And that thing that Babyface is talking about is a lot like that, right, Babyface? Yeah, it's pretty similar to that. Um, Ready Player One, though, if you, anybody has a chance to read it, it's really good. <laughs> yeah. So well, I'll uh, have to check it out. I, a, I can't see it on mobile. It's a lot get the, like Get the audiobook while you're driving. It's excellent. Oh, yeah. Okay. There's a, so who wrote that book, uh, Ready Player One? Oh God, I can't remember. remember. Okay, someone let me know. So meanwhile, I'm gonna hit up with a comment. Up, uh, someone says, uh, "Payday Two has all the real guns, but the names are not used. Uh, maybe a patent yeah. issue. This is which is what we it's were talking same, about. It's the same thing. So Payday Two, yeah. Payday Two is a heisting game. You're ba basically yeah. Um, and they have. I mean, it's funny. All of the guns that are there are real life firearms, but yeah. they're they're named something completely. Yeah. And I could tell you guys this, and I'm going to use this <laughs> just as an excuse to hold up this gun one more again and show you guys. I know for a fact, like Chris, uh, Chris, for example, lo and lots of the companies out there, they they fight any of these things. They want to maintain the right. So like Chris is going to be oh, yeah. making their own uh, airsoft versions of the guns. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Instead of other people doing it, and a lot of companies are doing that. So I'm sure that they're fighting for their rights in the in the video game. As well, and and I don't blame right. them. I mean, you know, there's, there's not, they probably stand to make way more money out of that than even selling the guns. Except, even, I, honestly, oh, even, yeah. if you're, even if you're not like, even if your developer, your game developer is not paying a huge sum of money in like a royalty or a licensing fee, just it's from the exposure of, yeah, just from having the gun in the game and people being like, oh my god, I love this. Yeah. When I was a kid, I can't tell you how much I wanted a suppressor, and now I'm like. 
I want all the guns. I want all the suppressors all the time. So right, it's a gateway drug. Really works. Oh, yeah. NFA is a gateway drug for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's a gateway <laughs> drug. See, a lot of the gun manufacturers don't understand that because when they put the guns in the games, and you've got all these major YouTubers has got 10, 20 million subscribers, and they're playing a seen, game yeah. that has that gun in your hand. These kids, when they get up and go, oh, my God, I remember that gun. I want that. Yeah. And they'll go and they'll get that gun. Video <laughs> games drive. But here's the, here's the other aspect of it. You would not believe the amount of guys that play video games and guns that legally cannot even own a gun. Oh, oh don't yeah, surprise yeah. me. <laughs> well, half, half the world can't own – three-quarters of the world can't own a gun. So yeah, I'm sure. just talking U.S. Oh, and you right. pick – Pick top ten. Pick your top ten guys in the gaming world. They legally can't own a gun. <laughs> oh, you're talking about the guys who are like playing professionally. Playing the gamers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah the gamers. Yeah. See, yeah, I didn't even I didn't even realize this. Like the other day, I saw an interview with the game. You know, the rapper, the game. I don't know if mm -hmm. you guys ever heard of him, yeah. Walter. We know you never heard of him. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, the hey. rapper of the game, I found out that that guy is like in the world. He's number two in um, one of these uh, Madden NFL and other games like that. He's actually playing those games online and he's like highly ranked. You yeah. Know? I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's weird, right? <laughs> like, Can he change now, the tire? Huh? Can he change his tire? Uh, I don't know, but I can tell you something right now. <laughs> people, you know what, Hank? There's a lot of truth to that. There's a I lot know. of guys I, who are like that. They're, oh, I'm good. I'm ranked fifth in the world on Call of Duty. Yeah, and you take them out back out there and you put a gun in their hand. They they're like, uh, what do I do? They couldn't load that gun if their life depended on it. Much no, less, exactly. Much, much less use it effectively. Yeah. No. You know, yeah. you know what I also find is kind of funny is because – and I, I do blame some of this on video games. When I take new shooters out to go shooting – Oh, if I yeah. take men out, they always have <clears throat> some sort of preconceived notion of how to handle a gun and what to do and how to be good, and that makes them horrible shots. The first time yeah. they're shooting, they're all over the place. You take, you take a girl out shooting for the first time, they're ridiculously good. Yeah. Marley yeah. Is a, my Marley wife is can outshoot me all the time, dude. My girlfriend yeah. she can plays video games. my ass. Yeah, Marley I mean, is yeah. a better shooter than me. She doesn't like shooting like I do, but she's a way better shooter than me. Any yeah, day. one thing women can do is learn faster than men. <laughs> and, and, and I think I think because of video games, you know, men are more likely to be gamers. Uh, women don't have preconceived notions of like, yeah. oh man, I know exactly what I'm doing. Now, even but if we don't know about video thing. games, even if we don't know about video games, we act like we know what we're doing. That's exactly. the that's, that's called machismo. Exactly. Yeah. Well, let me, let me ask you a quick question there. Sure. Because um, I was out of the gun industry for quite a while, but when I was in and I was in armor, I would train soldiers on how to shoot. Just the basic fundamentals, not like the level of sniping or anything like that. If I got an older guy, you could give him a couple pointers and he would take it and he would be successful. If I got a kid from the inner cities and I showed him a weapon and said, hey, this is the basics, he was great, fine, he was willing to learn and turn out to be a great shooter. If I got the kid between 18 and 26 to come from the middle of Kansas or Iowa who grew up with a, a gun in his hands, who can't hit the broadside of a barn, and you say, hey, sir, this is a gun, I know you've never shot anything like this, because it's fully auto. I said, you know, this is what you need to do, just remember these three or four basic things, dude and learn it get used to it don't be scared of it and it would take them three or four years and they still couldn't hit the broad side of a barn yeah. and they're so yeah, they, stubborn and yeah. bullheaded <laughs> they're like look dude i'm trying to be your buddy and just give you a couple pointers i'm not here to be your dad and crack you and kick you in the butt every time you do something wrong and a generational it's it's a thing to try to teach it, individuals you know, just the basics of guns. I've had first sergeants, lieutenants, generals. Hey, man, I've had this gun that, you know, they told me never put oil on it, but am I supposed to put oil on it when we go? <laughs> you know, that, that's a true thing. Yes, and we had, when we got deployed, that. yeah, when we got deployed over in the desert over there in Saudi, um, guys, we, we didn't have any lubrication or anything. And the only thing we could do was suck a little bit of motor oil out of the engine just to try to, you know, keep it lubed. But we ended up having to get graphite for our guns because everything gummed up. You was constantly wiping the dirt 
out of the crack of your ass and off your gun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a fact. The first, the first Gulf War when the troops went over there, a lot of them didn't have compasses. They didn't have. It was. They were nothing. Such, they did, it was such a clusterfuck when they went over there. They were so unprepared. If Saddam Hussein would have attacked, he would have slaughtered us. No, no, <laughs> no. We we. Had, it depends on the unit because the, the the group of guys that I was with, we we all carried CLP with us. We had the proper stuff, but the majority of the backward afford or uh, the the back deployment yards, they had no clue. They weren't prepared at all. We brought because I was artillery. We kept gallons, fifty five gallon drums of CLP to keep our bores clean. So we had lubrication for our weapons. But I was in the group when we first showed up. They didn't fight us. They had their hands up in the air and said, feed me, feed me, feed me. You know, we I wasn't nowhere near a part of what's going on today and what's going on. And those guys, man, I tell you what, uh, my heart's out to them. The soldier motto and the brotherly support that you get from your fellow soldiers and stuff, those are bonds that you can never be broke. Yeah. I, I don't know if, I don't know if we... Are you still there, Tyvin? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, okay. yeah. No, what, yeah. I, what I meant was they, when they first took the guys of the desert and dropped them off, a lot of them were really ill prepared. If if he would have pulled the trigger on us, then he would have over. He would have just a pure force of his forces would have overran us. Yeah. Know? So how so how's the enemy today? Is the enemy uh, more? Are they better educated? Do they you know <laughs> is it because of like YouTube and stuff like that? Are they having access to better information or at least a little bit better you know I, are they actually aiming <laughs> you know a lot of them I think, of, go ahead i what i understand what i hear because i don't have any first-hand knowledge a lot of the those people those people they're still illiterate they still can't read half of them can't write um yeah our problem the last eight years was nobody was there to win we were just okay. there to chase them around the desert if you put, and we're not allowed to shoot back and if you put the proper guys in charge it won't last very long. Trust me. Nope. It won't nope, last not very at all. long at all. Yeah. That's what we need to do. Okay, so we've got a question here. How did Battlefield boost the sales of World War II era guns? Does anyone want to take that? So, I, prestige? Yeah. Is so Battlefield, have, what was the vintage, say like, I know when Private Ryan came out, that was a big push for World War II weapons. Prices of Thompson's went up. Everything went up. What's the timeline with those and, and stuff like so that? Yeah, when did so Battlefield is, come out? The latest Battlefield is actually a World War One game. Um, so yeah. the, most of the guns that are in that, you, unless you're a, a high-end collector, you just can't, yeah, can't get them. Maxims and 19 and yeah. Browning and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. this is the things that you just can't yeah. have. Um, unless you know where to buy something and it's going to cost you twenty thousand yeah. dollars because it's a collector's piece, or unless or your grandpa it. gives it to you, yeah, or, or we change lucky. the world. <laughs> or <laughs> change the world, we can remake those things, right? Or it's a post sample, like I got in here underneath my feet here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Most of that is up, nostalgia. <laughs> Most yeah. of that is fan based. Most of it's nostalgia. Um, they see something and they want to fill that part of that community and be something greater. And they see these guns in the video games and, and they actually find out that these, some of these guns are real. And a lot of the gamers are actually, you know, 18 to 34 and they're at the point of the life. You know what? I've got a little extra cash. You know, I see this, I play it in the video game. I'd like to have that. And, you know, they go and they get it because it's a collective. It's something that they're, they're a part of. They run with their buddies. Because video games are based off between – you can run solo and go do things, whatever. But it is based on a six-man squad. Unless you're playing Battlefield, then it's 32. But you're basically playing with four to eight of your friends at any given time when you're online. And most of the guys, you're either right close to you or there are guys halfway around the world. And a lot of these guys, they, they talk, you know, offline, they're friends, they're Facebook friends yeah. and they go out and they communicate and they do different things. And they, you know, they'll go say, Hey dude, look at this. I got this M1 grand or I got this Mauser, you know, from this video game. It's, it's just a persona of wanting to be part of a collective. Well, yeah. let me, let me tell you one thing about the video games um, with the world of tanks video game. I don't think guys have played yeah. that. I, I don't play it, but yeah. I know about it. They're big. That that outfit that owns that or runs that are big time into military vehicle stuff. Um, are they actually yeah. promoting a restoration of vehicles and 
And, wow, uh, I didn't know that. And propping up um, different events and shows and stuff. So yeah, they're a big, you know, a big, a big part of the, uh, I guess, the collector um, museum. You gotta find some way to change out oil in that tank. So they devised a video game for people to play, <laughs> and they make money off of it. Well, yeah. I mean, um, it makes sense uh, to, another... to get your uh, to get your fans out in front of the real thing, you yeah. know, at, at different events, mm-hmm. you know. Go ahead. There's, yep. there's a there's a company. I'm trying to think of the name. Uh, Company that makes Killing Floor. There's a game called uh, Tripwire. Company that makes Killing Floor. They made um, uh, Rising. S- oh god, I can't think of the name. Basically, but the the, the uh, game developer studio is called Tripwire Entertainment. Um, their gunplay is always really, really good. They actually own their own arsenal, so they have oh, cool. like before they go to in, before they go to develop any game, they take guns out that they either don't own or want to put in the game and shoot them. And yes. Get a real feel for it. So it, it's awesome. It, it comes through in the game like completely. It's it's great. Yeah. You know what? Yep. Someone someone needs to make a, a video game where you can be like your favorite gun YouTubers. <laughs> uh, that's actually been proposed. Um, <laughs> That'd be cool. That, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I I was thinking that Call of Duty was trying to propose that um, a while back, where they were trying to get some of their MLG guys. Um, they had problems with the licensing, and a lot of the MLG guys was wanting like top dollar, and they were like, "Nope, too many egos." Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. What it comes oh, to. so it'll happen. It'll happen eventually. Any? The, any oh, the, look at that! A clacker, a real one. Yep. Yes. Oh, okay. So what? You don't know what that is, Hank? No. no what is that for? Well, blowing what, up shit. Yeah. yeah. It blows up the oh. uh, yeah. Sends yeah. a spark down. Yeah. <clears throat> So you uh, run a wire. Uh, to Hank that. don't want to lie. He clicks that every time he tries to get his mohawk stand straight. Yeah, <laughs> I want one of those. I'll, that's just like uh like those uh spinners. I'll be clicking that thing all the time. Oh, well, oh, my, oh god. my god! <laughs> Can you those see those nice spinners shot. are the biggest joke in the world? Them things are like a, a six cent bearing with thirty cents worth of plastic, and they're getting ten bucks out of them. Yeah, whoever whoever devised it is making a ton of money. Yes. <laughs> well, hey, gentlemen, I, I don't mean to be rude. Hank, thank you so okay. kindly for letting me be a part of it. Anytime you need me, guys, Hank, Babyface, it was nice meeting you guys. Yep, I definitely. appreciate all the, the love and support tonight. Y'all be cool, be safe. Uh, I got to sign out. I've got to go over to Philadelphia tonight. All, all right, right, man, be safe on the road. Thanks a lot. Safe driving. Uh, shout out to everybody in the comments. Shameless plug. Check out Hank Strange. Subscribe, like, share to his YouTube channel. Make sure you tweet him out. All right, thanks. And definitely. All right, guys. Okay, See thanks, Ivan. Yeah, I gotta go. Bye, guys. See. Bye. All right, and and I definitely uh, recommend you guys check out the Tyvin show if you want to get into more uh, video game stuff. He's a cool guy, not just a gamer. Obviously, he was in the military. He's into guns. You know, doing no, I, his thing. I had no, I had no uh, knowledge of him until you mentioned tonight. So. Yeah, he's been uh, he's been in the you know supporting the show for a while. So I figured we'll bring him on. Yeah, well, um, like I said, the first time I go to his channel, he's testing out guns. So yeah, you know, he's a he's a for real gun guy as well as being into the games, which is a cool thing. So if you want to see someone that you know, and then he <laughs> likes he likes us because what he figures we have. Yeah, what what's guns? What, what is, is that, that another one? A different type? Well, this is like it'd be like a, this is actually came out of a tank. It's like a backup for the to launch a. That's a cool. Right? Right? If it doesn't go off or whatever. Well, right. If you let the the the, the wiring in the tank doesn't go off, this would be the backup. Yeah. But on, on the ground, then like engineers and demo guys use these for do the same thing. Yeah, like the clacker. He, when when the Walter clacker. tortures somebody, he straps those to their <laughs> testicles. Yeah, and it real fast. <laughs> but, no. Oh, hey, wait, hang on a second. Speaking of, uh... <laughs> oh god, oh boy, <laughs> don't tell me you have somebody. a testicle a <laughs> testicle stretcher. <laughs> Come on, Walter, break out the testicle stretcher. <laughs> Let's see the box. You see the box? box? See Uh-oh. the box up there? That's a real McCoy. Uh, you know, for test testicle shocker? No, f- well, you probably could, but that's <laughs> yeah. You put that's a testicle plunger. <laughs> you put the dude's testicles in there, and then shoop, <laughs> and I, I, then you I get a big explosion. <laughs> I don't, I don't mean to put any ideas in people's heads, but um, a magneto works better off like an engine because oh, all you gotta God. do is go. 
Like that. Just oh, God. oh, yeah. It'll boom. Baby face. Every time you try to show a gun, I'm putting this gun back up in there. Just, oh, I can't uh, compete with that. With you. <laughs> Walter, you need, a, you need to buy one of these. You got to buy one of these cranks and, and put a third pin in it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I could just yeah. take I could just take one of my MPAP pistols and... There you go. Third. Well, it needs to be. It yeah. needs to be five four five. I like five four five. I do have one. <laughs> yeah, actually, I love five four five. I do have four. I think I do. Or two twenty three. One or the other. I don't know what. I thought. Yeah, Either one would be cool. So, a quick thing I wanted to say, like with with my boys, they're big into video games, and I think they enjoy because they, we're talking about the age and everything. I right. think they enjoy the fact that they're young enough that they're playing the games, but then they can actually have access to some of the guns. I think that's like you know. Well, I told you about the boy. I told you about the Boy Scouts going out and shooting yeah. like M1 Garands and stuff like that. Yeah, that's cool. They have no concept of the weight. Of no, the it it seems so easy when you're just right. in the game. Yeah, yeah, and running they, around, plop, 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 plop. And they pick up that eight and a half pound rifle and they shoot it one mm -hmm. time and they're like, "Oh, <laughs> this yeah. is real." So, you want yeah, you want to you, you want to do it again? Oh no, I'm good. <laughs> it's like yeah. give them give them one of those black tip armor piercings. <laughs> yeah. Or With like the thirty out six, or like the keg twelve shotgun. Nice. Oh god, yeah. Oh man, that thing will. Yeah. <laughs> that thing will beat you up. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so go ahead. I had somebody approach me about doing some video game stuff with my gun, but it it never came to be. It just um, ah. they had to get. I had to talk to the boss and I look look, baby face is our baby face is our tech guy. I don't see yeah. why baby face can't make a video game us all into video game characters. Oh yeah, that's, oh. you know, you know <laughs> Come on, baby face. <laughs> You're supposed to be able to do this. Universal. Stuff. It's all universal. I can just, you know, write games. That's why yeah. we got you here, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're the knower of all tech. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> like, no, I don't think so. But hey, maybe maybe we'll maybe we'll make this happen. Um, you know, we'll make this happen one of these days. We'll, we'll make it happen. So um, this is a video game. Yeah. Okay. So Jim Lewis. Let's see. Um, Jim Lewis wants to know: Do you guys know what they call the fidget spinner when he was young? I'm trying uh, to think. The, oh, uh, a, a butterfly knife? No. What's the punchline here, Jim? Yeah, we don't know. We don't have the punchline yet. You yeah. can't. You can't ask what the question if the punchline hasn't been set yet. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna ask. Uh, you okay, I, no, I've got the punchline. I'm, I'm gonna okay, say so, a whirly gig. Whirly gig. Okay. It's, it's Walter, gonna be what's your answer? Joke. Walter, what's your answer? No, I don't have an answer. I, I was uh, gonna ask. He's saying a belt. <laughs> <laughs> was a belt on his ass or what? Yeah, I guess. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're bored. A yo -yo? Somebody says a yo-yo. <laughs> no. Well, how about the clackers? Remember the clackers, the two balls on the string that you go da 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 da. Oh yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Eventually, eventually it snap or break. Uh, you hit yeah, or you, or you whack your buddy with it or something. Yeah, or, yeah, or you hit yourself. Well, with I, when I was a kid, the fidget spinner with my siblings. <laughs> yeah, we just kicked each other's asses. That's how we got out. Yeah, that's how we got fidget out of frustration spinner. now. Fidget spinner, yeah. just a small girl. That's all. You know, just go out there and punch <laughs> you. <laughs> oh, boy. That's called a top. Yeah. So you know what? Let's um let's hit up some uh, let's hit up some news. Any, oh oh, Walter, what were you? I was gonna ask. I've been I've had this sitting here on my screen waiting. What were you? What were you machining today? You had someone oh, um yeah, I'm turning a piece of metal. I gotta I gotta make an adapter so I can um fix some chambering and some barrels. So I gotta make this piece that goes on the end of the barrel blanks push oil through. So God. I'm I'm just kind of hey, boring that. Hank, I keep telling you, whenever I get a lathe in a mill, I'm going to make everything. If I want something, I'm going to be like, I'm yeah. just going to make it. Yeah, you like making stuff. Okay, All let right, me well, you, can, you can get a nice lathe for what that, that Python. Uh, no. I could sell a Python and get a lathe, yeah. Oh, you're going to sell the Python now? No, he's not going to sell the Python. <laughs> the Python's out of here. No, no, it's not happening. He's going to, he's gonna like, masturbate that Python for at least uh, another I, I had to get it in there one more time. Yeah. I wanna, uh, you know what? I want to shout out. You know, actually in the studio, hanging out with me is uh, R. Hendry. He's here, hanging out. In the oh, studio. yeah. Yeah. Who's all? He's always in the chat or whatever. He's hanging out with me. Ah. Yeah. You know. I don't think he's he's not having as much. He's probably thinking right now, man. It's way more fun to actually yeah. be in the chat. Oh yeah, yeah. It's just weird <laughs> sitting there in the dark. Than to be hanging out in the dark <laughs> studio. Well, people, yeah. What people don't realize is Hank is in the light, but if you go behind the camera, it's pitch black. You yeah. can't see anything. Yeah, it's just like a big massive warehouse. Well, there's, we're in there a room. No comfortable chairs. It's only like really crappy chairs. Yeah, uh, th there's a comfortable chair right here. Yeah, Hank has the oh, one comfortable all, chair. Yeah, that's all I need. <laughs> and and the machine gun. So yeah. you don't have anything. 
That's all I need. So let's hit up some new stuff. Uh, okay. Who has new stuff? You have new stuff, Walter? Oh, was, uh, okay. If not, I'll give you guys a chance. I want to talk about this because I, I grew up in New York and I've I had my dealings with the NYPD. I actually have members of my family there on the NYPD. I have friends that serve in, in uh, uh, police departments in, in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. You know, shout out to all those guys. But this is a, this is a funny story. So uh, this is from the New York Post. NYPD chief loses 45 vacation days after failing to report officer who allegedly pulled a gun on him at end of an affair. What? So. He was having an affair with, with a female police Other officer. Guy's wife. Oh. Yeah. So um <laughs> he the other guy pulled a gun on him and then no, no, as no, punishment no. he loses wait, what? No, no, no. It's the, 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 the woman who he was having the affair with that she was also a police officer. Mm -hmm. They had a seven year fling. I mean, they would have sex like in the station house and the police cars all That's over the gun. place. And then I guess he <laughs> broke up with her and um you know, and then she got into it and pulled a gun on him. You know, you guys can actually see this chick that I'm talking about because she has like her name is Tabitha Foster and mm -hmm. she, I guess, wants to be an R&B singer. So oh, she's dear. got a YouTube channel, and some other social media oh, where yeah. she's singing and stuff like that. So you could check this out. But she's apparently suing the NYPD for like a hundred million dollars. So all this stuff came up. And, million dollars, huh? Yeah, and uh, he got in trouble because, you know, after they broke up or whatever, he's married. I don't know whether or not she was married, but he was married. And after they broke up, she pulled a gun on him, threatened to kill him and his wife and his kids. And, and, she, and he didn't report it. No, he didn't report it. And the NYPD is punishing him by him, he, taking he away 45 days. <laughs> that seems totally appropriate for that whole. No, know, I don't think so. Wrong there I mean, at all. Yeah, I mean, probably 45 days. He probably has like 4,500 days. Yeah, yeah. You know, the way the NYPD um, system works with uh, – it's crazy, did, man. Did, uh, did, last week, did we talk about I'm, – I'm skipping ahead. Did, last mm -hmm. week, did we talk about the smart gun that's been easily <laughs> disabled? With yeah. a magnet? Or the two yeah. magnets? With a magnet to the side of it, yeah. Right. Yes, we uh, did. Yeah. We touched on that smart gun stuff. You can keep the smart gun. Sorry. Yeah, I'm good without you it. Keep, you can keep your smart gun, your smart car – um, all your yeah. smart stuff, yeah, because all it is is yeah. all, anything's so you're not, not, you're not getting a Tesla three. Is that what you're saying, Walter? Nope. You sorry, I'll, I'll pass on it. You're not gonna get a Tesla three? <laughs> nope, nope, no sorry. Tesla for you. Nope, don't need it. Sorry. No Tesla for you. you. There's no electric car that you would get, not at the moment. No, no, okay, yeah, you gotta, you know you what gotta I would like you, you know, gotta all, plug it in still. Yeah, all kidding aside, all kidding aside, I well, first of all, I like the Volt. I've never, I've never driven one, but I like the idea of a Volt because it's kind okay. of a hybrid. So, okay, okay, okay well, so that, I'm gonna throw this that's, out there. That's different, though. Yeah, when you, got a, when you got a gas engine and you can recharge on your own. That's yeah, I, I'm gonna throw this out there and see if anybody else. From what I understand, it is more efficient and economical for a gasoline engine to produce the energy to drive the car than it is for a power plant to produce the energy. Yes. Send it down the power line to your house where you can plug in your car. And then you have to have those yeah, because nasty, you gotta have those nasty, nasty batteries being made to, yeah, in the car too. What like lead and, and oh, acid all kind, and all kinds yeah, of other parts. You don't touch any of that. And then yeah, this, and then when you get in a wreck and they catch fire and they gotta call out the uh yeah, the, the, yeah. The hazmat team. The hazmat team has to come like spray well. The, with the worst phone. part is the the worst part is the rare earth metals, which by the way um, we don't have a lot of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's get, a lot of them the in name. Afghanistan. Get the name rare earth. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, the, the, the Russians the Russians have a lot. You know. Yeah, they're in Afghanistan or maybe on the moon, which we never went back to. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a whole other yeah. story. So. But yeah, I like if if I was you know. I would choose some if I had to. If I had to, I would go for something like the Volt. Um, I take a but, Tesla. I think but, Tesla's are cool. But uh, but Chevy's discontinuing the Volt. Uh, Tesla, you know, I'm not. I don't know. I'm not knocking Tesla, except uh, I think, I think Tesla. I, I don't know, man. To me, Tesla is just like a big pyramid scheme scam. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. You know. Um, what, now, happens if, what happens if the government money's not there? Yeah, exactly. If the government money wasn't there, they wouldn't. They wouldn't exist. Yeah. So, yeah. And then I've been like, since they put out the Tesla three, I am a car guy. So I'm interested in all kinds of cars, including that. So I read the articles, but um, they put that out. And like the media is just like, you know, slobbing their knob. In infatuated. And why, and infatuated. why is that? Because he was up Obama's ass. 
Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. Why so I'm, <laughs> that's why they're all over it. <laughs> but I'll tell you what I do think is practical, and people can argue with me if they want to. I think uh, electric motorcycles are cool. I think those are. Never seen yeah, one. That's that's those, a, are, that's cool. those are more practical, and we're going to see those become sooner. more and more prevalent. Sooner, yeah. Sooner, sooner. Because sooner. they're lighter, and the batteries, and you know, the whole the the whole way that you can set up a motorcycle to be electric, I think. It's a yeah. lot easier. So, you know, I'm not, listen, something has to make sense for me to do it. You know, that's, that's just the way I think with cars, it doesn't make sense. That's why now they're already switching over to hydrogen and hydrogen is ridiculously expensive. And it's a little bit dangerous. Yeah. too. Do you remember Walter? We saw that hydrogen Chevy, um, yeah. Yeah. The uh, military, the military prototype thing. Uh, yeah. It was at SEMA show. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, they're, they're like, so we, Walter and I went and talked to those guys. I guess I never put up that video. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you did. Yeah. Yeah. Along with a bunch of other video I had to put up, <laughs> but I was talking to, no, I don't think they wanted to talk on camera about this, but no, I was no, asking no. them, who is this? Because that Chevy thing that they're making, that's a hydrogen vehicle is ridiculously expensive. It's basically then, a, a fuel cell. They use a fuel cell. Yeah. And then they said, um, they were like, oh, this is for the special ops dudes. So I was like, wait a second. You're telling me that there's going to be special op dudes in like Afghanistan or whatever driving around and basically like this quiet spaceship looking like thing. This is not undercover. You know what I mean? That's the thing I will see people going after just to steal that. So I don't know. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, the, the Chi Com Special Forces dressed up yeah. as a Taliban go to steal a thing. Yeah. Yeah, because can you imagine? When, anyway, so that that didn't make any yeah. sense. That's going to be for the special ops guys. Special ops guys just need to get a Hilux. <laughs> right. Exactly. A diesel one that they can burn anything in. Yeah. yeah I mean, that's, you know. Yes. So but if you're going to if you're going to do something like that, it needs to be like a uh, basically um, diesel electric. Yeah. So you, you have both. You have, cool. you have both options. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. on the subject of pickup trucks, because I asked this question on my Facebook. What's and it the kicked, favorite pickup? Yeah. yeah, it kicked off. What's a, the story kicked, here? Yeah, it I kicked off a thing. I didn't get involved. Why, in that. why are you looking at me like that, baby face? What's the story here? You selling? You selling that, uh, <laughs> that nice car you got? What? Why? You I don't know why you're looking at me like that. Looking for something uh, else. Got a car. Uh, Lola. Lola got it. Got it. Oh, I, why is she driving the? Why is she not driving the Forerunner then? The other day I showed up and you're like, oh no, she's she doesn't drive the Forerunner. She's, she's, she's got a car to work. Yeah. So you know, yeah, I'm gonna take yeah, care of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll deal with that situation. So you know, I, I'm gonna pose this question to you guys. What is the best pickup truck out there? Just let me know. What are you? you what are you? What are you? And... What are you using it for? Let me know. Uh, me? I need. No, I mean, I need, even you what, I need. I need a pickup truck because my phone's getting really big. Let me hide my phone because. Oh, you're, oh, wait a minute. Hang on a second. Don't, don't talk about big, all right? So I need to pick up a truck that I could like throw my phone in the in the in the flatbed and drive my phone around. Okay. That's why. That's why I need a pickup truck. No, listen. Well, I, I'm living I, I, in the country. I've been in the country for like ten years now. I, you know, I'm getting a cowboy hat and some. Oh, boots. you're not First getting. Off, some I'm getting hat. some of those ostrich boots that dudes wear around First here. Off, there you go. I don't know so how you guys feel about in. this? You'll buy new. You get an Elstrus get away from me. Oh, you're you're for, used. You're a used guy. Go for something. Yeah, yeah, if you got ten ten to twenty thousand miles on, you're gonna okay. save a lot of money. And it's baby face, new. baby face. There's no Mustang pickup truck. <laughs> no if, Mustang. if I were buying a, a, a truck, it'd be a like a four wheel drive Ford F one fifty. Oh, F one. Listen, that's what I want. A Raptor. I like. I like. No. So you you're, for, you're stupidly you're, overpriced. So you are approving a Raptor. Uh -oh. Is that what you're saying? I did you? not say that. <laughs> yes, my you dad, did. My dad has a. Uh, my dad has a twenty. What are we in? Twenty seventeen. I think he has a twenty sixteen Ford F one fifty dual. What's a dual cab? So it's got the both sets of doors. Mm -hmm. And um, I like it. I he hadn't let me drive it yet. Every time I go to Tampa, he's he's always nope. very protective of it because it's brand new. Oh. But um, it's nice. It's got four wheel drive. It's got everything. I was gonna say if I get a pickup truck, I would let I would let you drive it, Babyface. But we know that's not a good idea. I mean, as long as you don't eat pork beforehand, we'll be fine. sure. It's just don't eat don't eat pulled pork in the hot sun before. <laughs> yeah, we don't. I don't know, man. I don't know. I, hey, let, can, can we tell you about it. so? Go ahead. Go for it, Walter. No, no. I, I, when I ask what you're going to do with the truck, you're going to work with the truck? Or are you going to just ride around in it and try to look badass? Ride around um, and look um, badass. Yeah, yeah basically, I mean, I, riding around in badass is on top of my list. We $70,000. You know, a Raptor costs about seventy grand. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, for you to get for you to get your badass truck, it's going to be seventy grand. You could buy a whole other hacienda for that. Yeah, yeah. For, for a rap, yeah, Raptor, a Raptor, listen, I really do, I do like the way that Raptors look, because they look, you know, um, they look pretty cool, and then they're all aluminum now, and twin turbo, yeah, cool. but it's a V6. All the Fords are all aluminum, not just a Raptor, all of them. Yeah, two of yeah. the price for me. Yeah, I think a Raptor is a little bit expensive, you know, practically, all, I, I mean, we do go off-road when we go shooting, guys, come on, that's all, true, we go... We go oh. we go off road places when we go shooting. So if you spend seventy thousand dollars, you should get an H one Hummer. <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there. Um, if we, look, first of all, if we want to get a Humvee, a hey. Humvee is not that expensive. How much does a Humvee yeah. cost, Walter? You can get a Humvee for five to ten grand. Now, if you're going to do it, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. yeah, then then take that five to ten grand Humvee and build it properly. Oh yeah, then, then you'll have a badass truck. Okay, but how much is so? So if you get a if you get a Humvee from like a military surplus, like what does it cost to build it up? Well, that all depends if you want you know diesel engines and air conditioning and all that stuff. But yes, I need air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? If you want air, this is Florida we live in. <laughs> uh, I, I'm telling you about it. It was nice this morning here in Safety Harbor because that tropical storm. Mm -hmm. We, yeah, we didn't not on Sunday. Sunday was murder outside. <laughs> I didn't go. I didn't go. Outside. Actually, I didn't go outside very much on Sunday. I stayed inside. I went, I went and mowed the lawn, and I came back in, and it felt like I was going to die. Yeah, it was murder <laughs> outside on Sunday. I got so. lazy on Sunday and didn't do much yeah. anything. So yeah. So people, let me know what's the best pickup truck. I'm saying, Walter, convince him. Yeah. We got to get an H1. And we'll try, if purposes. you're gonna, if you're gonna spend thirty or forty thousand, anyways. Yeah. Buy it. Yeah. Buy a five to ten thousand H one and just do it little by little. And if you I could, if H1. I could somehow, if I could somehow hypnotize Lola, <laughs> I would be. We would already be sitting. I know she's. The, I know she's listening. At the Lola, Ford dealership. She's gonna want to spend forty thousand dollars. Have him spend seven now, and then you know six months from now he can spend another two or three, and you know, add something know. to trick it out, and then do another you know two or three, trick it out some more, and you got to like this dope project that you keep going on with. Yeah, she doesn't want to be doing projects. Yeah. Sur survey says. Mm -mm. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. If I could hypnotize Lola, I would have already gotten a Raptor. So don't worry. Don't worry. Not, so not worth it. <laughs> so hey. okay, what? Go ahead. What news? Do you have some news, or what do you want? Talk, what do you want to talk, talk about? Uh, tell me, talk guns for a second. Sure. Yeah. I went on to the firearm blog. Let's talk guns. And that, uh, yeah, are that, you, you know what? Hey, 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 put let's that away. <laughs> put that. Put that away. No, go you said let's talk guns. I am going to fire. This is blog. the Ford Raptor of guns right here. Uh, uh, what you're going to see is even way cooler than that. Okay. All right. What, what on the firearm blog? Scroll down to uh, inter in integrally suppress AK gold. Oh, AKs. Packs. Yes, that is really. I cool. saw that they're testing. It. What's the uh, one of the other countries? The Ukrainian. Slav countries is testing. Ukrainian. It. Ukrainian. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's cool. Yeah, um, I watched that video. I couldn't understand shit that the guy was saying. <laughs> well, I, 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 actually, I actually know somebody, I think, that speaks Ukrainian. I could probably ask him. Yeah, well. I, I wish I could understand what the hell the, dude, the general uh, dude is saying. How's it sound? The Ukrainians speak Russian. They don't speak anything weird, so... Oh, um, it sounded, you know, a bit, it's tough to tell on, on, on a video how it sounds. So, well, I haven't watched the video, but the gun looks cool. That gives me ideas, actually. Yeah. So Do it. Um, I think, oh my God, it sounds super cool. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think we've had this discussion before about in, integrally suppressed or integrally suppressed, however the hell you want to say it. Um, oh, you know, I'm, I'm firearms. At, I think that's the wave of the future, man. You know we were talking about the future before. I'm looking at this picture. It's it's not semi-auto or full auto. It's manually operated. That's yeah, what so they're shooting. They're so there's no gas system on it. Yeah. So basically, it's really so, quiet. It's really quiet because so you don't have any. Yeah. yeah. Go for a three hundred blackout. Yeah, but yeah, because you could. That's true. You could it, Listen, it's, it's Americanized. Yeah, have you guys seen the compressor from Spice Tactical? You love bringing yeah. that thing up. <laughs> that thing is so awesome. Spikes. If anyone from Spikes Tactical ever watches my show, you know, they probably send him don't. a compressor. Yeah, send him but, a Spikes compressor. You know, Mike. He's an SOT. You can just yeah. mail it to him. You know, if anyone knows Spike, <laughs> you're scaring my wife. This is Spike Tactical. Yeah, if anyone knows Spike of Spikes Tactical, say please, please <laughs> send I think, exchange I think, a compressor because that is badass. I think the person you got to talk to is actually Spike's wife. 
Yeah, she owns, yeah, yeah, yeah. She owns okay. the Well, that's that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. The truth be told, <laughs> yeah. why why are you revealing secrets? <laughs> Not a secret. Don't don't look so, at that guy. Don't look at the guy behind the curtain. It's here's probably a, here, here's another interesting one on another uh, website. Uh, uh, an Australian cop, well, a motorcycle cop, I guess, lost his magazine. He was carrying a Glock, riding his his motorcycle wherever. Lost his Glock mag out of his pistol, his his duty gun. Uh huh. <laughs> somebody turned it in. I guess somebody in Australia found it and turned it in, and it was missing two rounds. So they're like sending people back out to find those two rounds. That's how crazy the Australians are about their guns. Hey, I've heard about in England where somebody finds a single twenty-two caliber long rifle and round in the street, and it's like an international incident. Yeah, it's that's crazy to me. <laughs> yeah, that's how that's how it how, is. How many rounds do I have just sitting around loose right now? <laughs> Now here's okay. So yeah, I think that um, <laughs> you know England's actually thinking about arming the police again. I saw that too. Yeah, which yeah. They damn well need to. Because I think right now you have to get, like do a special thing to go out armed, but they're thinking about <laughs> arming the police again. Walter's looking at his, his ammo cans to see what's hanging That's, around. <laughs> yeah, I Is mean fifty. <laughs> I think it's a good thing if they arm the police because that's a step towards arming the population because that's what they did. They disarmed the police so that they can convince people that the people it, yeah. should also be disarmed. It will normalize so, people seeing firearms. And yeah. cops should have guns. It's just – And they need to be trained. That's the yes. that's the big thing that's going yeah. on in our society right now that people just aren't being trained. Now, there's a whole bunch of you know cop stories. I don't want to beat up on cops, but this one is kind of interesting. Um so Cicero, this is in the uh, Truth About Guns. Cicero cop plants a buyback gun on a perp that he shot, allegedly. <laughs> so there's an article talking about um, the police recover thousands of guns every year, many of them through buyback programs, as well as by confiscating weapons seized during arrests. More than 5,000 guns so far this year alone. The guns are supposed to be destroyed. T-tag comment... Uh, Commentators have often wondered how many buyback guns have gone walkies. After all, I, small... go ahead. I know I've heard of I've heard of a few of them that have gone missing. Yeah, there's a, a somebody I I think I've heard through the grapevine a, an actual python showed up at a gun buyback and the oh. chief of police was like, "Yeah, this isn't getting destroyed." No, you can't <laughs> destroy a python. That doesn't make any. Oh. That's that's a frick. Yeah. That's sacrilege. But mm -hmm. uh, so here, so in this story, it says the Sun Times reports there's a civil case against the Cicero, Illinois police, uh, alle alleging that a buyback Smith and Wesson was placed next to Caesar R. Muniv, shot to death by a Cicero police officer, Donald Garrity. Brilliant. Well, you know Cicero. Yeah. So Cicero the, fam was the family's suing for three and a half million. You know, Good for them. Yeah. Cicero is the home of um, Al Capone, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. That's where he had Yeah, that. that's been going on in Illinois for a long time, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, you know, shoot this dude here, throw a gun down or whatever. Illinois just so, seems like such a – it seems, feels like such a disaster. Anything surrounding Chicago just feels like a total disaster. Yeah, there's uh, there's no hope for Chicago. Should we just bomb Chicago? Oh, don't. I think we need a giant saw. We need to cut off California and push them out into the Pacific. No, no, <laughs> and no. Then, and then we need to just somehow bury Chicago. We can, like – blow up from underneath and have it just sink maybe make a new lake out of it what is that night vision what do you show night vision optic a ak night vision oh so, that's cool yeah i haven't um actually, is that is that surplus did you get that from a surplus thing i bought it from one of the distributors yeah cool. okay what is it what's it what's what's it uh, called what's the make well this one happens to be polish so it's probably one of those old gen ones that barely works well, it's a Gen 1, but I've had my experience with Gen 1. They work good enough to get the job done. So that okay. Yeah, that's pretty beefy. Huge. <laughs> yeah. But what kind of batteries? Like a, what kind of batteries does oh, that use? The batteries are like these things are ancient. You gotta actually put powered by a car battery. <laughs> yeah. No, you gotta you put carry on your back. To activate the batteries, you gotta actually put liquid in them. 
Um, oh, those what? are the old school. So those are the old school, um, like acid batteries. They look, they look like little lead acid batteries. Yeah, it's <laughs> what? Okay. Yeah, I mean, Can you I, replace them with little gel. What is, do you have? One of the batteries there. I wonder if they could um, be replaced. Can we go to what's the name of that battery store that we have here? One, batteries two, plus. Batteries, yeah. batteries plus. Yes. Pardon me, sir. I'd like to get some uh, batteries for my Polish night vision. <laughs> yeah, because isn't that true? <laughs> batteries plus says, hey, you know, any anything that needs yeah. batteries, bring it in. Well, we'll have Got to, you covered. We'll have yeah. to do a little video about night vision because yeah. I got three or four different ones. So I want a PBS 14. Always yeah, one. too expensive for me though. They're right. cool. Um, yeah, I um, most yeah, of thermal is going to be the new thing, I think. Uh, night well, vision is cool, but I think thermal is going to be the new. The new I have I have some thermal too, actually. Um, how old? Because I love. I've always wanted to try it. How old? How old? Well, I mean, that one right there is from like Vietnam it, okay. era. Actually, the, the thermal I have the site's about yay big. So it's not it's not the small small one, but the price was really good. I just really? say that. Yeah, nice. I did. I did some horse trading for it. So <laughs> of course. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so about how much? What does that go for, Walter? The thermal. The thermal site I have when it was new, I think, was about thirteen thousand. Whoa. Oh my goodness! Um, I'm gonna try that out. <laughs> it didn't call you guys. Yeah, I actually swapped an upper for one. Believe it or not. Really? Wow. Oh, okay. Oh, so you didn't? It was a, you, it was a trade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't go anything more than that, but it was a trade. Yeah. Yeah, we That's we a should hell of a deal. we should do some night vision stuff, Walter. The problem is, is that um, you got to figure out how to. Put GoPros or whatever we're gonna put behind Who's it. Okay, that? what are you showing us now? I'm gonna lock it on you because you just. This is up. the uh, you know how we were talking about HK 416s the other day. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is the uh, one of those 22 knockoffs of the 416. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. Um, I bought it when when things were a little nutty, so I paid a little too much for it. But yeah. But it looks just like the real McCoy. I mean, it's. It looks good. It looks sexy. Yeah, it's fun. I need to make it go fast, though. I think. <laughs> yeah, full auto. Maybe I'll get that. Maybe I can get that electronic finger. -da 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 -da, you know? <laughs> yeah. What kind of silliness is that? I'm sure. sorry. There's a there's an adult store right down the street from here. If you want me to go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can get fingers, yeah, I get tongues. Something. Yeah, fingers, <laughs> tongues, whatever you need. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, I'm sure you could get that electric tongue and convert it to pull a trigger. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anyone's ever seen what I'm talking about, but there is like a... Oh, uh, well, one can only imagine. Yeah. Um, yeah. So... Let's not go there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think okay. it's a little too late for that. Yeah, <laughs> we won't go there right now. No. At that's this for, moment. That's for another, yeah, we'll keep it clean because, you know, we haven't gone into the dirt at all. <laughs> <laughs> that's for that's for another show. So you know, do you guys want? Let's you know what? Let's talk a little bit here about. Um, let's talk about this video that we put up. Did you guys see? I posted the video where we would test. Babyface missed out on this. We. Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. I did. I watched that yesterday. Actually, I watched okay. the video. What you, I like the I M16 like obviously wins. Yeah. So no. what we were comparing is a machine gun, an M16 versus the. Um, uh, an something uh, another AR that had the echo trigger from Fostec in it, and then versus a uh, different Frank AR that Franklin had the Armory. yeah Franklin Armory binary trigger. So, what do you think about that video, Babyface? Um, so everybody seemed to like the the binary trigger for whatever reason. I I have run I've never run the binary, so I can't really comment on it. But I've run the echo trigger, and I mean I love it. I can make that thing go. Um. No, you have me. run the binary. You have run the binary. Have I? Yeah, you've run it with me because that's what we had in that gun where, remember, I was shooting it and I was outrunning it because you I shoot. You can outrun it, yeah. Yeah. That's, I was that's always been a problem with that trigger. Yeah, so you've shot that, but you didn't outrun it because you shoot a complete, like, I ride the reset. Yeah, you so. have to make very, very distinct, like, on, off, on, off, on, off. Yeah, yeah. I have I have to practice more with it. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to make it go really fast, and that's not yeah. the way to. Yeah. I, I like both of those. I mean, obviously, nothing nothing beats a machine gun. We should all freaking have machine guns. I don't know what the hell's going on in the world that we're being deprived of a basic human right. That's right. It's, machine yeah. guns. You know, but these are like Walter was saying earlier. You know, they are they are. It's a little bit of an improvement. Now, is it practical for everyone? 
I don't know. You know, I don't know if I mean, you know, you it's an easy way for you to burn ammo if you care I mean, to do that. It's still it's still for a lot of people it's still 400 bucks. I yeah. mean, that's that's my problem with it. Well, and I mean, so so lately lately um I think that Fostec has actually come out with another version of that. So now yeah. I think you don't have to have the bolt carrier anymore. Yes, that's that'll the definitely thing. Make, that'll definitely yeah. make it cheaper. Yeah. But the, I don't think the price came down that much. No. Okay, yeah, I'm not aware of what the price. Did you, what's the price? Because I haven't checked it into right it. Now. We haven't we haven't gotten one of those from Fostec. No. You know, I don't know if we will or we well, won't. We'll when try. I, when I, Judd, Judd, if you're listening, send us one. Send us four. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be great. <laughs> it'll be great to just get Judd to come on and talk about that and talk about stuff that they're working on. Because you know what I think Judd should make a trigger for? Not this, because this doesn't this doesn't need a special trigger. You know, because it's already. It's already got. The you just, how many times can you hold that up? <laughs> yeah. So, but you know what? I think would be cool though if they do make one of those triggers for the. If you're gonna make a trigger for something, make it for the Chris Vector. I think that would be really welcome. <laughs> right. So, so, the so echo dudes, trigger dudes that have regular the, triggers would love to see one of those for the. You know. The Vector. The Echo yeah. Trigger Two is four hundred and seventy nine dollars. I'm sorry, I don't see it. I love it and I want one, but I I can't do that. Mine, you can buy a Glock. I I ordered mine and it was like four twenty something I think, That's and that's still too much for me. It, it, they ran a special on the Fourth of July, taking fifty bucks off. Yeah, I thought it was going to be cheaper because you don't have to have the bolt carrier anymore. Yeah, so, I, and I, I understand that in all in all manufacturing, mm -hmm. the price doesn't pay for the part itself. It pays for the R and D and the machinery to make it and that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, I, I still I just don't see four hundred fifty dollars. They don't. also they also that's not their design either. They license that. They design. have to pay a patent fee. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, well, I think they were paying. Player. They were. I think they were paying for the uh, cassette style for having a cassette style trigger is to Mossberg or whoever. <laughs> yeah, whoever had a thing over that. But I think that they, was in court, they, and they, they don't have that. Like they're not supposed to be able to um, to hold a patent on on the cassette. Yeah. That's that's good, but I know they're paying Hyperfire for the spring, some part of the spring action. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, um, the price is definitely a thing. You know, we'll see. I heard that if you had one of the older ones, there's like a conversion kit and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you can buy the little part that uh, the little. I'm not going to call it a third sear because it's not a sear trip. Yeah. Um, but the little part that that would act in that way to to give you the second when you release. Um, you yeah. can buy it, and that's twenty five bucks. It looks like. Uh, yeah. Mike Bryan on the blog, the chat thing is saying that they sold Echo One to finance the project or something. So that doesn't surprise me. Yeah. yeah. This is, listen. Sometimes this is how it goes, right? We, we will see more of these types types of triggers going forward into the future, and the price and all that kind of stuff will come down. It'll get competitive. You well, know, that's what happens to. in a free market. Well, remember, remember when the AR drop-in AR trigger assemblies first hit the market? You had that like a, one, a huge you, thing? You had one or two. And now you go mm -hmm. through a Brownells catalog or Midway. It's like there's 25 yeah. or 30 or 40 of these damn things. So, yeah. You know, like, which is good, which I think yeah. is good. I mean, I think we'll, we'll, you know, we'll see improvements. We'll see better technology and all that come out yeah. of it. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, hopefully one of these days we'll see, like, actual – Machine gun. The practicality, you can or argue that all the all you want to. A machine gun isn't a machine gun isn't practical. It's a fun toy. Yeah, that's, yeah. It's that's it's a nice thing. thrill. If you've got some Unless, ammo you want yeah. to burn through, it's a good thrill. Neither is a raptor. It's exactly. um. It's also a good thrill. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, there you go. You you just answered your own question. Yeah. If Let me you tell can, you, I mean, and you even even from what I understand, even from a military aspect, like an M16 or a, an AR-15, it very seldom goes into full auto. Most of the time it's semi. When you gotta cover your ass, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the only time you're using it. And, <laughs> and even then, you, you should have a machine gunner that is doing that, I, from what I understand. Like, watch out, watch out. Saw or something. Well, ever, you ever seen the, seal, the SEALs do drills? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's full auto all the time, baby. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's overwhelming firepower. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Okay. But they're they're doing completely different things from your average like everyday soldier. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they got ten of them killing five hundred guys. Yeah, that's what yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, guys. So you know what? Let's wrap it up. We've been doing this for a while. It's been fun. We've had a lot of fun. I know you guys probably want to eat. I'd like to eat dinner. Wouldn't <laughs> mind. <laughs> I've seen baby faces cheating. I got. I have some potato salad yeah. over here. He's so eating right now. Fun. He's like, screw that, dude. <laughs> screw that. I guarantee you, baby faces sent me messages on my phone like you bastard. Time to wrap it up. Wrap <laughs> yeah, it up, wrap man. it up. So, uh, Walter, we'll let you go, man. Is it? You guys want to plug anything? Anything coming up with um, Safety Harbor Firearms? Um, well, just the normal stuff, Facebook, um, Instagram. Um, you can get us there. Yeah, You're we're building like, guns. I'm You're building posting, guns for people. I'm, yeah, I'm posting stuff every day. Uh, uh, what else? Um, do you want to mention what we talked about earlier today maybe a little bit? Um, no, let's hold on to it until okay. we, until we like, you know, sort it no, out. No, for sure. Have a date. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have some surprises you coming up for, me, for you guys. That's awesome. This is, congratulations. Yes. We're <laughs> going to send out cards. and have a little getting, save the day card on my, getting, my fridge. Yeah, we're getting married. <laughs> There's a, a little story. I will get ma- Let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> all kidding aside, I would get married to Walter just to have access just to Just have machine guns, right? <laughs> yeah, just to have machine guns. Him, <laughs> you would use him for yeah. his machine guns. I'm, I'm gay for machine guns, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gay for machine guns. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's weird. If there was ever a reason, <laughs> if there was ever a reason <laughs> to go in that in that direction, I'm to scared. become to become strictly dickly, I bet you never heard of that one either. <laughs> this is getting weird. We need to wrap this up quick. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Walter. So what what else what else are you up to? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. But hey, but hey, but hey, that's all, folks. <laughs> all right. So. Um, Typical stuff. I mean, I'm working on your uh, working on some 50 cal. Nice, nice. Yeah. Little little 50 cal. That's what we need. Nice. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Is <laughs> that's it? One of those is it? Hold on a second. Time. Is it integrally suppressed? I remember you saying <laughs> something. You sent me a message about a 50 cal that was intricately suppressed. I, that... I think you I think you got one from the wrong person. Yeah. We can, <laughs> we'll just look. We'll just take the barrel to the drill press. We'll drill out a bunch of holes yeah. down it. Yeah. And I'll put a okay. Walter has. I'll put a. I'll put a Campbell soup can on it. How you like Walter, it? Yeah. Walter has two CNC machines, baby face. Three, three, three. Oh, three. You know what you would do? If, you know what no, I would no, do? No, you don't want to know. It would be if I had I one would, CNC machine. If I had a key to his shop from midnight to six a.m., I would be there every night making something. Yeah, we're gonna go on a road. <laughs> Here's what we're gonna do: when I get a pickup truck, me and you, baby face, we'll, we'll go on a road trip. We're gonna <laughs> to start designing. Harbor. We're gonna start designing the safety harbor. 22 suppressors what we're going to do. Yeah, Walter's uh, going to pull down the doors as soon right? as he sees us coming. Yeah, going to lock it. Because <laughs> whenever I go to the shop, I guess there's like no work going on. Oh, <laughs> you know. Okay, so that's it. You're working on 50s? Yeah, well, yeah, we're doing the normal stuff around the shop. Um, I'm trying to think. Like I said, when I said I'm working on 50s, I'm working on some special little 50s. Remember those special okay. little 50s? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. We've got giveaways coming up. Everybody's yeah, yeah. And, and the Hank, as you like to call it. So, yes. Um, yeah, yeah. So you wanted SBR, didn't you? Yep. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I want all positions. <laughs> okay. That's a, that's a, that's one of my favorite lines. From I need a, uh, I need a I need a CQB fifty, please, so I can uh, I can t- <laughs> tight corners with. Yeah, I will CQB the shit out of a fifty. Are you kidding me? Can you imagine, like, dude, inside of inside of the pickup truck with a fifty, boom, just like smash all the windows. <laughs> there, there might be a terrorist like four houses down, and I just want to hit them through all the walls. I'm gonna turn the corner, and I want to go straight through every wall. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, Walter. Is that it? Because if you, yeah, that's it, right? I thought we're supposed to be responsible gun owners. <laughs> we are. We totally are. We totally are. All right. Yeah, I'm done. Okay, <laughs> baby face. What about you, man? Where the hell are the videos? I actually have some plans. Uh, whenever, hey Lola, whenever I get on the company roster, I can take some suppressors home. No, whenever uh, next time I come over, I'm going to shoot. The uh, expensive suppressor next to the cheap suppressor, and we'll see how it sounds. Yeah. Also, um, Babyface, you and I are supposed to be doing some optics video, so we need to we set do. a date. Yes. For that. We, we need to yeah. work on some optics videos. Yeah. In all seriousness, we're going to throw up because we've been we've been testing yeah, a bunch yeah. of optics over the last we have a year. Black series optic coming along, and that thing is crazy nice. Yes. Yeah, so we've got some cool optics videos coming with Babyface. Make sure you guys subscribe to Babyface. <laughs> Follow Safety Harbor Firearms and all their social media, and don't forget to follow at um, the uh, the Tyven Show on YouTube. 
Tyvin, that was our guest that just came on. I want to, um, you know, thank everyone that's watching the show, commenting and all that good stuff. Shout out to Robbie, who's been hanging out here all this time. Big shout out to everyone that sponsors us. Of course, Safety Harbor Firearms, Rand CLP. Okay, Andrew's Custom Leather that we have some stuff coming up with yeah. uh, very shortly. Andrew's Custom. And, of course, Big Daddy Guns. Because you know, Can't without big it. daddy guns, I mean, come on, man. This, this is how this is how you get your hands on things like this. Big daddy guns, as well as the studio, of course. You know, they let us have access to the studio. Can't wait! I'm gonna shoot the crap yeah. out of that thing. Yeah. So we got to thank them. <laughs> All right, guys, don't forget. Like we're on iTunes. I just put another five um, podcasts up on iTunes. So I think we're up to like I don't know. <laughs> 25 or something like that that's on iTunes. So watch those, like, give us positive feedback on all that. For myself and everyone else here, thanks for watching. Peace. We're out of here.